Hello, you all you wonderful people out there in Twitch land. My name is Dan, and with me today I have Matthew Bell, former product manager for Konami Europe and host of the Other Side blog about game design. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Uh, thanks for having me on today. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I would just like to verify that you guys can in fact hear us before we get too far ahead of ourselves. We did a couple mic tests, but everyone knows that OBS and Twitch don't always cooperate, so... Alrighty, thank you very much, Aaron. And I would also like to just take a quick moment to thank Bad at Yu-Gi-Oh for following and Squigmire for subbing with Prime. That's actually awesome. You're our first Prime sub we've ever had, so thank you so much for that. Hey, there you go. We're already making progress on the account. <laughs> and now Nearly Not Quite has followed as well. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, go ahead, guys. If you want to throw in the follows, um, that'll, be, that'll be really great. So why don't you tell us what we're going to be talking about tonight, Dan? Huh? So we are going to be talking about the game in general, Yu-Gi-Oh, Master Duel, and so on. We're going to talk about Master Duel's unique format. Uh, we're going to talk about the different decks that we use to climb to Plat 1. Both of us have made it there. And we're going to go over some of our replays and discuss what we were thinking, why we did some of the moves we did. Maybe some of them were just a little bit funny and kind of just talk through our plays, give you guys an insight into what goes through our head when we're playing, especially in a, a situation like ranked play, when you're plat two and you're one win away from getting plat one, you are going to try your absolute hardest. There is no like, oh, it would be really funny if I like went for this. Like you are just going to actually think everything through, play seriously, take it seriously and try your hardest. And that's not something that you often get to experience when you go to something like a locals where you've got a lot of people just like, oh, I pulled this fa dawn dragster i'm gonna play an entire fa deck and see what i can do with it oh i'm not gonna lie when i started getting closer and closer to plat one that toxic competitive nature that i have very deep inside of me that i thought i put away like finishing the game of jabonji years ago it starts coming out and if i like my opponent sets up but i can't play i'm like i hope you dc i want you to dc right now i'm so close to plat one <laughs> i can feel it creeping up on you but like it's just a sign of how invested and much i've been enjoying master duel since its launch <laughs> I, I did have one game against an eldlick player who had vanity's emptiness imperial order and skill drain that i was streaming for some friends and all of them told me like just scoop it up you have no hope there's no way you can beat this and i was like i don't have to beat him i have to beat his internet connection and sure enough on his next turn victory screen popped up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey guys, we're going to tell you how we made it to Plat 1, and one of the methods is just disconnecting your opponents from the game, just <laughs> hoping for the best uh, in the unwinnable situations. That's the secret, that's the secret. You don't get on a YCS. Uh... But, yeah, I've got to be honest, Like, I'm so happy the Master Duel is uh, out now, because I, for a long time, like having like a lot of cards and collectibles and stuff, how much space it takes up in your house, searching through it, getting trades, when you're going to go buy cards singly from vendors or something on card market, TCG player, or one of those resources, and just being able to type in the search. I'm looking for this, drag it in, have the deck put together. I can have the same cards played across multiple decks. Uh, it's fantastic. And I really appreciate the fact that I can now sort of just play Yu-Gi-Oh! whenever I want from home. It's Obviously, there are other resources available that, well, previously were available, but it, while I was working for Konami, there was a case of like, yeah, we're never going to, I'm not going to sit down and do that. That would be a bit of a bit of a no-no, not allowed to check that out. And it's just good to be able to hop back in. I never thought I'd be picking up a Yu-Gi-Oh card or doing a live stream for it, but Master sort of given me that opportunity, and uh, it's, it's really smooth. I've got, I can't lie, like, the client and stuff is fantastic. It feels great. Uh, I love actually playing. It doesn't feel like too slow when you're constantly being asked to respond to chains and stuff. Like, how, how are you finding yourself from your end? So I, I have noticed there are the occasional moments where I badly wish it would ask me to chain. I, I, I leave it on auto. Uh, I know the best method is actually that hold one. That seems to be the way to go where... It sets it to auto by default, and when you're holding left click, that treats it as being on, and if you're holding right click, it treats it as being off. That seems like probably objectively the best way to go about it, but I've, at least for this first format, just been trying to experiment with what I can do with auto, because it also gives me an insight into what they can't do with auto. Mm -hmm. um, a pretty good example of that would be that the auto feature 
only asks you if you want to use your spell speed 2 effects, your quick effects, in the event that a chain starts or a summon or attack is declared. So if you're in, say, the battle phase and you destroy a Sky Striker monster, or even just in the main phase, if I use like Axis Code Talker and destroy a Shizuku, if they bring back Ray and they have it set to auto, it will not ask them if they want to respond to their own summon with Ray to make the Kaina, at which point priority then returns back to me and I can use Axis Code Talker to pop Ray and they can't chain it because it's Axis Code Talker. Oh, I won more than one game like that. Yeah, so like... <laughs> just like, they've got so many cards. If if they have it set to auto, I just win. And you just, like, get them on the client side. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that okay. guy's They're... still a win. Still a win. It's, it's a part of the medium, just like the clock, like the turn timer. Uh, I, I did have one opponent who took a very long time. And I know that when you end your turn, you don't get the clock refresh of 180 seconds until your draw phase, not theirs. So your timer, if it has 10 seconds left and it goes to your opponent's turn, that 10 second timer is still there for your opponent's turn. So I just kept activating effects like one at a time, not even chaining anything to each other. Because every time it asked him if he wanted to respond, it would take one second off his clock. And like eight or nine effects later, it flagged him. Even though I had no business playing any of the effects I was doing, I had no hope of winning that game. You can just like tell, like... It's not just about getting your opponent's life points to zero. There are other factors at work. And if you can beat, whether it's their internet connection, their clock, or the fact that they are leaving their thing on auto, like these are all different elements that are in Master Duel that aren't necessarily in the physical game. But in the same way that people have made it as far as worlds by just winning every round in time at a WCQ, you do have access to these other elements that you can use to win games. And because each one of them is a tool to use, to ignore them is just, it's a mistake. Like, they're there for yeah. you to use, and they're there to punish your opponent for not using them. If he had set his timer, uh, his responder to off, then he would have been fine. He would not have flagged and well, probably gone said, on to beat me. Was, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, this is the thing I like, though, because it's more within the client. I don't have to worry about any of the rulings getting complicated or worrying about... Whether or not your opponent is not necessarily being 100% honest, don't want to accuse people of uh, cheating or anything like that. But you know, it does happen. And like in the digital client, like all of that's taken care of. And anything that happens within the client is perfectly fair game. So if you're just trying to burn your opponent's clock because they spent too long in the tank and they've only got 10 seconds waiting for a refresh, absolutely you can abuse that if you're if you're trying to win. Like, yeah, is it is it unsportsmanlike? <coughs> It's it's legal. It's it's a it's not breaking any of the rules within the game. Whereas if you were slow playing it at YCS. A judge would intervene and say, actually, you know what? You are trying to abuse the end of match procedure. But because you're playing in a digital space, like so much of the speed of your searches is taken up, all your shuffling is all removed, uh, you, you, every, all of that's above board. So taking advantage of some of these digital, digital elements is, is important if you want to climb uh, to the top of the ladder. Uh, yeah, we're talking about all this before we get into some of the decks. Mm. And, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, to uh, call out GUI's comment there, no, no for any player. Uh, setting a, an infinity monster face down to the spell truck side. We don't want to accuse every player of doing that. Like, there are plenty, like, most of the Yu-Gi-Oh players in the community are fantastic, really, really great to play with. But, like, the stress of having to keep track of everything my opponent's doing to make sure it's above board, and then working with my own combos and stuff like that, that's a lot to track. And I just absolutely adore that the digital client takes away, like, 90% of those worries. And as far as I'm concerned, if the client lets me do it, it's legal. And if it doesn't, they'll patch it. Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there were that's a few a, things a you could take advantage of grotesquely in that first version. Uh, it, it does say now that we're on version 1.0.1. Uh, you can't see it unless you like go all the way back to the start page. Thank you very much, Skyhawk Yu-Gi-Oh! for the follow. Uh, oops, that's not the page I was trying to go to. But um, if if you guys did happen to play in those like first three days... Uh, after a trap card had resolved, Altergeist Multifaker became a quick effect for the rest of the turn, which was oh, okay. really, good. really cool for a little while. Thank you, Arcane Jester. Uh, just being able to hold the Multifaker as long as you want, like, the whole turn after, like, you use a trap is... Meow, 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 beans! Oh, thank you very much for subscribing, Nearly Not Quite. Fantastic. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. Wow, yeah, so Multifaker is... Meow, meow, meow. Yeah, that, as a quick effect, that seems like a pretty good card. <laughs> Deba has followed. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the other one was um, Joel and Lockbird had the same thing, but after the update. 
after the update went live for, for like six hours, Droll and Lockbird became a quick effect after a search resolved for just the rest of the turn. Yeah, that seems pretty good. <laughs> I'd, I'd play Droll and Lockbird a lot more if that's what his actual effect was. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, that's just, that's just, um... So there's obviously some quirks, but obviously it gets patched. It's getting patched, and I think Konami's doing a great job with it. The rollout has been pretty smooth. I love how pretty much every player that starts can just get themselves a tier one deck. Mm. Like they give you enough free gems where it's like, hey, if you want to build one serious deck, you can do that. And you do eventually get to the point of where disenchanting cards, the game economy is going to be set up that you're going to have to spend money mm. eventually. But secret packs have made collecting themes extremely yeah. easy. I like I I absolutely adore it from a a business perspective they give you like 24 hours so you put time pressure on the consumer to go and buy those packs in those 24 hours uh you encourage people to then go okay i'm gonna craft this card and now i'm invested like as soon as i craft that card the clock is on that i'm gonna have to buy these packs uh in order to get the deck that i want and it makes it a lot easier because you, you do get to take what's it like four of the cards from the whole pack will be cards exclusively from that particular theme that you want for the most part yeah so you you do have the master pack which has like 6750 cards in it yeah 6750 and also, from a business perspective all of the good staples that you're going to want in everything they're in the tent they're not the seven fires in card pool to make it as hard as possible. yeah <laughs> and then the secret packs what they are is just like 80 ish cards from this pool so like they would pick like sky striker ace ray which it did not let me bring up that was annoying uh, okay, it's the other click. Uh, so you'd have something like Sky Striker Ace Ray and, I don't know, this Prank Kid card, and it would be a Sky Striker Prank Kid pack, and it would just have all the Sky Striker and Prank Kid cards. But they were already in your packs to begin with. When you open the selection, uh, the uh, secret packs, the first four cards still come from this pool of 6750, which means in theory you could actually pull the Kigari anyway in the first four. But the last four cards are from that, like, narrow targeted pool of 80 cards. Yeah. Um, the exception is actually these two here, Stalwart Force and Revival of Legends. Stalwart Force, these are selection packs. In 51 days, this set will no longer exist, but you can only pull cards from these 80 out of all eight cards in your pack. So it's actually, like, impossible to pull a Max C out of a Stalwart Force pack. It's a pretty good pack. I think... Um... When people were starting out, that was kind of like, if you didn't know what to play, you could just buy that pack, right? Whatever it gave you, you'd be like, oh, I guess I'm playing this set. Yeah, or this... playing Eldix or playing Sky Striker. <laughs> this is objectively the best set to build a deck from. You can spend a thousand gems and get ten packs of a set to get a guaranteed super rare. And then any super rare or ultra rare will unlock the associated secret pack for that deck. So if you buy ten packs and you happen to pull Shurag as your guaranteed foil then that will unlock the Tri-Brigade set, and you spend the rest of your gems on that set and build the Tri-Brigade deck, and just let fate decide what deck you're going to play. You could pull the Eldlick guy, you could pull a Trap Tricks, you could pull the Salamangre Gazelle, you could pull Servant of Endemion, you could pull this Drytron, Multifaker. Like, every good deck is in Stalwart Force in some capacity, and you'll unlock the necessary secret pack to build that set using your 10 guaranteed packs. Uh, aside from that, these uh, these like bundle deals, these three are all. Uh, oh, those were a great idea. Yeah, ten right. packs for the price of seven and a half plus a guaranteed staple. So getting each of these as well is yeah, a very good a, use of no your brainer. first gems. An actual fact, I'm not gonna lie, and I know the chat's gonna hate this, but from from a product management perspective, I think Konami was too generous with what they gave in the beginning. They gave you enough gems to get the dual pass, which refunds itself. Mm. The bundle deals that give you prime staples that you're going to want you get so many gems that you're going to be able to build a tier one meta deck straight out of the box and a lot of these decks they take they stay in the format for a very long time so Karami's done an absolutely excellent job pushing this game out and making it accessible like because if you look into the market right now it's like how do we get players away from mtg arena how are you going to get players away from hearthstone or legends of room people have already invested and got their collections there it's a big ask to say hey come play Yu-Gi-Oh and purchase it in the same way that uh, any of those other games are running so it's like all right we need to give people a chance to get in and for it to be meaningful so people want to a master duel is definitely the intended audience competitive ycs top level players who want to get in and play real tournaments play against real people and it'd be less focused on the anime and brand it's all about the actual game and full full credit to them they i think they pulled it off excellently because i i didn't see myself playing Yu-Gi-Oh again and then this came out and i was like oh i'll check it out and then like before i knew it i was like 
Oh yeah, we're de we're definitely gonna keep playing this. This is this is a <laughs> lot of fun. I'm I'm enjoying it again. They they also gave these two structure decks. Uh, unfortunately, you can't disenchant. Uh, what what are they called? Disassemble the the cards from these. That would be. Uh, I see pack. Oh, and the structure decks. Yeah, I was really annoyed by that because it's yeah. just like, okay, so if I want to sneak an ultra rare, <coughs> buy some structure decks. It's like, oh no no no, no we thought about that. We're not gonna let you. We're not gonna let you trash the the ultras from this set. I did get one recontract universe because it gave me my one of pot of avarice I wanted. So I spent five hundred gems on a pot of avarice at the end of the day. I mean. Actually, if you do the odds, what is it? Five thousand gems, you'd need three super rares from your pools. Yeah. To get that, I think actually those cards that are in that star deck, they're not in the master duel pack, right? Like you have to get the star uh, structure deck to get that. Uh, uh, the ultra rares. No, the some of them are and some of them aren't. Some of them are in the legacy pack, and then there's a couple that are like exclusive to solo mode rewards. Reinforcement of the army, for example, you can't get outside of solo mode or crafting it. Yeah. Um, like this pack, for example, it has Skulker Bat Joker, which is famously known as one of the best cards to actually craft because the first time you craft a card from a selection pack, you actually get a free pack of it. And Skulker Bat Joker is in two different selection packs. So you can craft oh, one for 30 yeah. crystals and then just break him apart to get 10 of them back. So you spent 20 crystals, but it gives you two packs. So it's effectively spending 10 super rare crafting points on a uh, pack twice when you make a Skulker Bat Joker. The other is Marshalling Field, lets you get three for that. Like, that's that's just three free packs. That's really nice. Yeah, it's quite a few people have put up guides on on that to uh, for, for best uh, economy stuff. You guys should definitely go check that out if you get a chance. I don't know if you put that up on your website, but it's just like, if you're from a mid-max perspective, like, definitely a good way of looking into it. <laughs> All the legacy packs. I... I am so sad that you can't disenchant cards from these legacy packs. Because <laughs> I was getting so many tickets. But we go we we'll get to talking a little bit about what we were playing on ladder in a in a little while. I was getting so many of these packs, I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. I'm gonna be able to craft anything indefinitely. And of course, obviously somebody who was sat down doing the economy design realized that was gonna be a problem. Like, <laughs> I was never gonna buy any gems because I had to disenchant these cards. Something I've noticed about the legacy packs is like they they contain a lot of these uh, including OCG exclusive uh, normal monsters, which is fine. But they also contain all the cards that, like, if I was Konami, I wouldn't want players to play them. Like, Final Mystical Countdown, Wars, Jackpot like 7, like, a Mystical Ref Panel. Like, a, a lot of those, like, really wonky out there cards seem to be in this set, which means it's impossible for players to pull one in Selection Pack and go, oh, cool, and then go run into Ranked and ruin someone's day with them. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit nostalgic. Like, I see stuff like they're pulling out there that I remember from back when I started playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! a long, long time ago and seeing these kind of cards coming out of packs. So it definitely sort of pulls on those. Again, I was never excited to see a backup soldier coming out of my was it, Fairy Servant pack instead of a Jinzo. But, you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's still kind of like looking back and you can sort of see all the cards that... How, how, much, how much they've changed, even, uh, to, to today's standards. <laughs> Gravity Bind, Spell Canceler. Oh, like... Gravity Bind was one of the most miserable cards to play against. <laughs> and it was just like, all right, I'm going to play Gravity Bind, and then I'm going to summon this direct attacker, and I'm just going to start poking your life. So I've got uh, Robin Goblin. And this is in a format where people are playing, like, free Heavy Storm, Harpies, Feather Duster, free MST. Well, we could, but at the beginning, no one knew any better. We didn't really have the internet set up that well. Mm. So people just didn't play all of these amazing cards that you could play in, in, in multiples. I remember uh, uh, figuring out that Mystical Space Typhoon was effectively Harpy's Feather Duster because while Heavy Storm was legal, no one would set more than one card anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, last at level area, level limit area B. Right. Uh, yes. So it's it's really good, uh, really good stuff. And I have to be honest, I am really excited about the future of this game, and I am very much enjoying it at this time. So, should we move on to talking a bit about the the format of the game, uh, as a, as in general, like the format of like how we play and uh, the types of decks and stuff that are being played on the top level of the ladder? Sure, why not? I'm not gonna lie, when you hear best of one and card games, a lot of people sort of kind of get that like, oh no, it just means that you're just some of these like cheesy decks that are are just gonna squeeze through the wins on ladder. But I'm actually adoring best of one. Like, <laughs> I, I can't see why I would ever want to play, willingly choose to play a best of three match ever again. Because like, I'm just at that point where it's like, yeah, if I lose to my opponent, it's fine. Just concede to start the next game. It's going to be something different. Like, it's not going to be like a slog through game one, 
I lose. Get to game two, get lucky on my side deck draws, win. And then game three, lose. I need, before you know it, I put an hour into a match that was already unfavorable. <laughs> like, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just completely fine to lose quickly. And just go ahead yeah. and queue for the next one. It's how I played Yu-Gi-Oh! with my best friend. And like, when we were younger, we weren't playing with side decks. The only reason that I ever got involved was just tournaments required it. Mm. Like, I, I, I will say also, playing. just like quickly, but unrelated, the music in this game is like surprisingly good. Like, better than it needs to be for a Yu-Gi-Oh! client. You know what? I bet there is uh, some people that manage the, uh, the, the YCS live streams that are very grateful to have more than music to dual play to play. <laughs> <laughs> we, got some, we got some of our own IP music here. Let's, uh, let's chuck that on. That'll be fun. Uh... Actually, I do need to be careful about what I say because ultimately I will only talk about Master Duel. I'm not going to talk about my time while I was working there. All of that information is still protected under my non-disclosure agreement. Uh, Naturally. So if you're going to ask questions or something in the chat, just keep in mind that I'm, I'm just going to be talking about Master Duel after it was released, nothing before that. Yeah, there was uh, there was a couple of YCS events over in Japan. Um, they they were basically memes because like you would get like this beautiful kit with like Sky Striker play mats and stuff just for entering, but only for losing the event. And it was a double elimination rather than Swiss, and you weren't allowed to like scoop. You know what I mean, like. So it, it was best of one. <laughs> it was best of one, and there was 2,500 slots, and of course it filled up immediately. 2,500 people just wanting to spend $25 on $100 for the Sky Striker stuff. And, like, by round three, the number of remaining players in the event was, like, less than 500. And it, it was just, like, nonstop. Everybody just, like, rolling to see who got to lose. Like, if I win the die roll, I get, I get to be the one who loses. So that they could just get their two losses and get out. <laughs> and just, like, get their Sky Striker playmat. But, uh... The, the event itself was best of one. The entire YCS was best of one. And because it was, like, double elimination, it, it also had a top cut. But because of the nature of, like, double elimination, it didn't matter. Like, if you lost any round before seven then you it, it just it didn't matter like you automatically topped and then you had single elimination for the top cut anyway so it was really weird like how they did it as far as eliminations are concerned but there already was existing ycs's with data of what works at that level in best of one formats uh a friend of mine roman keezer went over to japan and just topologic gumblar dragoned everybody the entire day for example and went undefeated in swiss <laughs> That's uh, pretty fun. Because <laughs> Japan just good, decided to leave that card pretty, legal. It's a pretty so. good card. Pretty, pretty good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, on the digital front, best of one looks great. I am more than happy to lose quickly and then just get on with the next game. I find it's way less tilting uh, as well. And then I don't have to sort of like memorize every matchup's post side deck game as well. Where it's like, okay, I'm going to bring this thing because I'm going to go first. My opponent's going to be bringing in this stuff. And then you just end up having to do a bunch of extra steps as opposed to just like Doing what we love, which is just playing Yu-Gi-Oh and smashing the opponents. Right. Like I just want to focus on the fun part and not the uh, not the Death Note style logic that I need to apply in between games. <laughs> when uh, in 2013 I went to Australia for a year, and they had alternating locals. Every second Saturday was like the serious big kid local that paid out like cash for winning and stuff, and every alternate Saturday was just this like little kid friendly local at like a flea market and they played best of one there and they didn't have rounds they just had like here's a sheet with every player's name on it go find someone you haven't dueled yet and record the result and then find someone else when you're done and just try and see how many wins you could rack up and play like 22 people in 22 games if you can find the time to do it before the tournament ends and those were all best of one so i had some experience with best of one tournaments i'd actually played in like 20 of them and seen like what kind of decks were and weren't winning and what kind of things it helped to pre-side deck and so on and so forth. And hilariously enough, Burn is indomitable in best of one because there's no one on God's green earth who's going to main deck a Death Wombat. It just doesn't exist. Just, well, let's be honest. Even if you did main deck a Death Wombat, like 99% of modern decks, they're not going to be able to give up their normal summon on Death Wombat and still combo off. Like, right. It just doesn't make sense. So... 
Burn, actually, Burn is a deck, uh, I did play a little bit in gold tier, as, when we get to the replays, we'll go over that a little bit, um, and I was, like, super happy with it, it was actually kind of a take on, uh, Ryan Yu's deck that he played at the World Championships in, was it 2017? Uh, I uh, no, think... No, was it 2017? Yeah, 2017. I think it so. In... It feels earlier than that, but he's also still so young, and it was the I'm Dragon trying, Duel, so... I'm trying to remember where in Japan it was, and I was there, like, <laughs> I was on the casting desk, uh, it was... It was in the Konami Sports... Uh, it was in one of the Konami gyms in Tokyo. He's a Canadian but, yeah. world champion. You think I would know this? <laughs> like... yeah. yeah, but yeah, this is a, this is kind of a take on the, the deck uh, that I did play for a little bit on ladder. And I really enjoyed how pretty much all the fun decks you just completely decimate. They didn't have a chance against this. The serious decks it is a deck that made Eldritch cry. And anything that does that, I'm quite happy about. <laughs> but... Uh, you automatically just pick up your ball and go home if you see Dryston. Like, you have no hope of waiting Dryston. Don't even bother trying. Just concede as soon as they play the first card. Like, unless their, their turn goes horribly wrong, you just can't beat it. Because I'll make Herald of Ultimate this and you're just like, oh, okay, I've got no way of removing that. I'm dead. Yeah, you do. If you want to beat Drytron with this deck, you do have to open exceedingly strong, like Ring of Destructions at the right moments no, and stuff. I, I don't care who you are, I don't think there's a draw in this deck that beats Dryston. Unless I, I, they, even if they just go, roll turn one, pass, <laughs> I don't think you can beat them. I did have a 3-2 and two record against Drytron during my climb with this deck. But yeah, it, it, is, it is the matchup that is like, whoa, that's really difficult. The most impressive win I got with it was against the Smorg Apex Avion deck. Because that's, like, unlimited negates. How do you possibly beat that? But the bird is once per chain. Mm. So you have to, like, play for that. But ultimately, like, this is just a deck filled with... And as you can see, like, they're all, like, super rare and rare. So they're all hidden oh, in the legacy cheapest, pack. It, yeah. yeah, it's the cheapest deck to craft, right? If you just, like, start out the gates and you something, like, really easy. You can ride this all the way to platinum. And you won't... You'll barely struggle. Like, once you learn the ins and outs of it... I mean, you're... you're extra deck is a lot more shiny than mine. Mine was just literally <laughs> the Yates, uh, one Kigari, which I very seldomly summoned, and a Shizuku, and then the rare... What's the second card on your extra deck there? The, the Magician? The Clara yeah, and Rushka? Yeah, yeah, I played that as well, because you just need a way to get the Fairy Tail Snow off of your field if you want to use uh, yeah. any Sky Striker stuff. There, but... There is this card, which is just objectively better because you can make it in main phase one. And then you activate Snow in the graveyard and banish her off the field and then chain the Hornet drones before Snow comes out. Yeah, so you can do some high level plays, but like it, you can easily get to platinum without all of that stuff. Like, yeah. Well, I say, I say easily, like you still have to spend some time learning. You have to put the time in. And there are going to be some games that you just like go, yeah, I couldn't get there. But you draw so many cards with this deck. I think once you've got the basics of what you're trying to do, hey, Solar it's, it's pretty easy. Hey, Solar Beam, welcome to the chat. I, uh, uh, I I do have one replay saved with this against the Cyber Dragon deck that we'll go over later. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, I think I think it's very solid for a cheap option to, to climb with. Oh, absolutely. But, you definitely don't need the engages. Um, you don't need the snow. You don't need the Lilith. Like, you can play this deck completely free of ultra rares. And it will perform 85% as well. Uh, Snow is a pretty big helpful card for this deck because of like balance of judgment and that interaction. And these yeah. things just let you see your best card more often. This is the most powerful burn card printed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And as long as it's legal, burn is viable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, the... essentially, it's just making the Hiate, right? And then the Hiate is doing... Directly so, stomping one of the engages that you don't want to do. Yeah. Or well, the Ray, if you haven't got to it. Yet. It's actually making Kigari to get itself back and then Hayate. So you get the 15, and then you get to play the second time on the next turn to do 15 more. It's 3k and one card. Yeah. it's And then that makes the net burn that you need to do of each of your cards go down dramatically. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we're, we're actually already talking about a specific deck list, and we haven't actually looked at what are people playing on the ladder. Like, during your climb, what were you seeing a lot of? I guess... That I think it's very important to separate pre-gold, uh, well, pre-platinum and then platinum, because the game very heavily shifted as soon as I got to platinum. Yeah, the, the moment you hit platinum 5, you could still get paired against even people who were platinum 1, and you can yeah. no longer get paired against people who are gold, and even when you are gold 1, you still can get paired against people who are gold 5. So as soon as your metal changes color from silver to gold, gold to platinum, the meta shift is dramatic. 
Uh, it... Yeah, it's it's like almost with the RPG, you go, oh yeah, I'm level like, 30, I could go to this new area, and then the new area is like level 80 mobs, and you're like, oh god, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> this is really hard all of a sudden. So... It goes all... The uh, the hardest matches I played were actually in Rookie because I played them on launch day and the entire player base was still in Rookie. <laughs> so, oh, no, it's okay. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to play Billy Break in, uh, <laughs> like in that, Bronze. Okay, in Rookie. Okay, yeah. that seems legit. But uh, uh, throughout Bronze, it, it did clean up a little bit. I, I saw an awful lot of the Utopia starter deck as I climbed through Bronze and Silver. That seemed to be just about all I would play against. People would just me, spend 1,500 gems and buy the deck three times. Yeah, it was all the Pendulum decks that I was seeing in the beginning. I, I started off with the uh, Synchro deck, and I was like, yeah, okay, this will be fun. That deck is unplayable. I'm not going to lie. Whoever designed it, I need you to go back to the drawing board and say, right, why why does this deck not work? And the reason is you're not supposed to make it work because you just draw the cards out of order. And <laughs> I, I sat down to play my first game. I went on the ladder first away. I was like, all right, let's play very first game. And my opponent drops like this full pendulum deck, and I'm playing this uh, really terrible synchro deck. And I'm just like, yeah, we got we got savage pretty hard there. Uh, <laughs> I maybe, think maybe this... we're gonna have to do this mode and see what that's all about. As soon as I found out Snow was legal, I built this deck immediately and climbed to plat 5 with it without skipping a beat. I didn't drop a single game. But I did see Cyber Dragons, Utopias, Tri-Brigades, Eldlick, uh, Lyra Loose Tri-Brigade, Zodiac Tri-Brigade, lots of just variants of abusing Karis. Uh, the Numeron deck was really popular, especially early on, like just going second and then making the number 1 through 4 and just OTKing. That was really popular in the first week. I lost week. To one of those. Uh, I managed to jam his combo, get it to a point where I was going to win on my following turn. I can't remember. I think I was playing Galaxy at that point. We'll talk a bit about that in a sec uh, when we get to it. But like, I had it set up so I was going to win the game next turn, and my opponent has like double limiter for game. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> two, two limiter removals. <laughs> you can't beat that. Mm. Uh, um, as soon as I yeah. hit Platinum, the only... I guess we'll call it rogue deck that I saw anymore was like blue eyes chaos max dragon and it was like okay yeah. you finally won enough times in gold and you're gonna go back there in the next half hour but for now thank you for my win I had the most some of the most fun games I played were in gold uh, but some of the, the most all of my most challenging ones were plat and I didn't really find as big a skill difference between people in plat one versus the people that were plat four or five I feel like if you if you get to plat and you can stay in plat you're very much a competent YCS player. Like at that stage, like you could go to a YCS and you're probably looking at a positive net record at that stage. Yeah. Probably better. And like, there's like 4 million players you've downloaded this, right? So you've got to consider you're playing globally into that top echelon of, of play. So you should feel absolutely, if you get to plat, you've earned it, guys. You, should, you shouldn't feel bad at all. Even if yeah. we're, we're saying, hey, you're going to get the motor path to go, go back there. Yeah, as as long as you have a win rate of 51% or higher, 50.1% or higher, you will yeah, get plat yeah. one eventually. Uh, yeah, but hey, the way I look at it, if you're 51% win rate, you're going to get good at some point. It's the same point as being on a bench press, right? At yeah. some point, you're going to keep, you're going to get stronger and you're going to get a little bit further ahead, even if it takes you longer than everyone else. <laughs> a, a thing uh, a lot of people overlook is just how low the skill floor on Yu-Gi-Oh! actually is. There is, there's 4 million people who are playing this and like... 3.8 million of them have never heard the term missed the timing before. <laughs> like, you you are a top 1% player Actually, just by virtue I, of, like, knowing what spell speed 3 is. Like, you're already in, like, the top 1% of Yu-Gi-Oh! players on the client. Ah, uh, interesting, uh, from nearly not quite there. Players on Steam only have a 9% of players getting to plat rank achievement, so it's top 10%, but then you've got to consider there's also PlayStation, Xbox, and... Uh, Switch. On Switch as well, and mobile, so it's probably not... <laughs> but if you look at it, like, even if you stretch that out and say it's, like, what, top 20%, that's still, like, very high up in the player base, like, considering 4 million players, top 20% of that. Yeah, that's still less than a million people. Top 25% would be top a million. Yeah, uh, so it's, like, by all means, when you get that, guys, do take a minute to pack up on the back and enjoy it and get your badge. Uh, but, like, the format that I saw whilst uh, playing through Plat, essentially, the decks I saw were Sky Striker, there was Eldlich, there was the Lyralisk deck, there was Dryston, and those were the main ones that come to mind. Like, I, I 
Oh, and yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, I, I can't think of another deck that I was seeing a lot of. I did see a bit of True Draco. Some, some guys in Plat 1 were playing True Draco with uh, Triple Macrocosmos. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the guys in the org has been playing what he calls Book Bag Turbo, because there's like a song called Book Bag by an artist named Draco, I believe. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't know any, uh, the, I did find the Triple Macro a little bit tilting. Like, if, if I had to sum up the you get master duel format for in terms of what cards are legal it's kind of like traditional but without any of the good cards i actually only saw virtual world one time yeah, the entire world. climb i'm pretty sure everyone who built virtual world just got plat one that like first day and then stopped playing and just like siphoned themselves filtered themselves out of the pool i spent oh, wait, the... wait 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 it's dryton dryton that you've been telling you've been letting me say dryton too yes. much yeah, I have. Dude, that's not cool. You need to call me out on that stuff. I'm not going to get better. <laughs> I, uh, I spent the first four or five days completely clearing solo mode. And in the meantime, all the virtual world players filtered themselves out into Plat 1. So I never actually saw any virtual world players except for on that first day when I was playing Burn. I played one virtual world player. And I it, a couple. And... It was really funny. <laughs> I played a couple, and to be honest, I never really struggled with the deck. I struggled to figure out what they were trying to do before I just killed them. But I'll talk a little bit about it, like, because I've been out of the game for quite a while. I haven't um, touched it until Master Duel came out. So I was like, I'll see a bunch of these cards where I'm like, I don't remember what this does or how this works or what my opponent's trying to do. Uh, so it was kind of, for me, it was kind of like seeing a bunch of... Uh, new shiny stuff and i was like this is interesting honestly i'm the same way despite having to look at the card text of every single card that comes out in the game the last time i saw a witchcrafter card was like three months before it came out in japan when we translated it and like two weeks later i already forgot what they all did because i was on to like the next thing and no one ever played one against me in real life so when i played against like a witchcrafter invoked deck in gold i was like the hell do any of these cards do? I literally, I almost ran out of time on my clock. I won with three seconds left on the clock. Because I kept reading all of his cards the entire game. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a long time. So it's been kind of a lot of it's been self learning. It's, I did see somebody play Dimensional Shifter against me and I was laughed. I was like, ah, I can see that card working. Uh, is what one of the cards I, I worked on uh, a long time ago. But it was yeah it's it, it was definitely fun seeing a lot of this stuff but even if i didn't quite understand everything that was going on i was kind of like figure out I was like, all right show me the board that you're making and i'll figure it out from there like i will we'll play we'll play you Yu-Gi-Oh after you've done what you want to do i'm not even gonna interrupt i just want to see what you, what i'm dealing with when we get to the end of it uh but yeah so i think it's pretty would you agree that then the top level play is guys Dryker, eldlich um tri brigade Tri, tri Brigade, yeah, Tri Brigade. Is that the Lyrilus version, or... Uh, just any any variant of it. You encounter all of them. And you encounter a surprising amount of Cyber Dragons still as well. And they love to use the Cyber Dragon Infinity Pet and just telegraph it. Like, if you lose the coin flip and then they put you on first and you see the Infinity Pet, you're like, cool, pass turn. And it <laughs> like, never fails. Like, they just love to announce, I'm a Cyber Dragon that's, player. It's not true. I've, <laughs> I've done that and my opponent proceeds to play Power Bond and then just, like... <laughs> absolutely clapped me on turn one. I'm like, well, <laughs> should have saw that one coming. Power <laughs> Bond is a strong card. Uh, uh, excuse me. I'll oh, buy 15% of players are on Platinum Street now. Yeah, it's just like, I, I do like the pets. Uh, I'm, I want, I really wanted the Galaxy Eyes Photon uh, Baby. I can't remember what it's called. Cloud Drake, I think it is, or something pet. But I feel like there's a lot of room for the cosmetics in that on there. Uh, I just think in the solo mode, they need to stop giving away like all the coolest stuff, like the... Um, the World Chalice Dragon? I forget his name, the little one. Yeah, just the uh, Guard Dragon Imduk. I cannot Guard believe Imduk. that there is no Blue Eyes White Dragon mate yet. Like, it's got to be it's, the it's reward for be, the first event. There's there's no gonna way. Be, it's going to be in a bundle, I reckon. It is going to cost you about 5,000 gems. It'll be a pre-order of, like, a new pack or something. It's like, and you'll get the Blue Eyes pet. Like, it'll be a Kaiba, Kaiba Legendary collection or something. Like, they can do stuff like that, and it's going to help with pre-orders. I mean, it's, it's what M Magic Arena does like if you want to get exclusive sleeves they've got the kamigawa bundles on right now and it's like oh you can get access to this alternate art versions of these rare cards you also get a bunch of packs you get some really cool sleeves you can only get if you pre-order this there's a lot of uh digital room that you can make for uh, turn into products on this <laughs> i've got 
what is this, eight decks built already? Like, the diversity is really neat. Like, you were mentioning, like, the decks you see in Top Cut. This is yeah. the first format I've ever seen, and I couldn't even, like, in my head come up with one, where Lightning Storm was better than Regeki or Duster. Because, like, Regeki is utter trash against Eldlick, and Duster is utter trash against Tri-Brigade, and there's such an equal representation of both that you just need Lightning Storm in your deck to be able to do one or the other. It's ridiculous. Like, I didn't even know it was possible to make a Lightning Storm format, and they found a way. Oh my god, yeah. Like, um, actually, that can be a little bit frustrating in the format. Uh, with Eldlick specifically, I think of all the decks that I struggled to play against, and to be, I'll be honest with you guys, uh, once I got the plat, the deck I was playing, I, I got to plat using Galaxy, and then I got demoted, and then I got back in playing Burn, and then I started to struggle a lot. And I, I, I actually messaged Adam, I was like, hey, what deck did you use to, to climb? Because you hit plat one before me. And he said, oh, have you seen Attic Vistas? And I was like, no, what do they do? And then he shows me this combo, and he makes access code talker, and he just kills somebody. And I'm like, that looks really complicated. And he goes, oh, no, 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 it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, a little <laughs> while playing through, and uh, once I got the hang of the combos, it's like, okay, I get it now. And I was actually stomping so many people uh, all the way through. Like, the deck is so grossly consistent. And I didn't see anybody else playing it. In fact, I played one in bronze. Uh, he, he makes that turn one guy who's has like six fires and attack can't be affected yeah by the him. bad card uh add a ad ignister arrival cybers or something like that you you guys will see in the replay uh, I come, uh we'll cover for that but like add ignisters i absolutely adore the deck and it was eldlick was by far my hardest matchup because it was a case of like okay if they open imperial order solemn judgment i lose if they open gozen max solemn judgment i lose and i was playing that is essentially if they open uh two of those cards I've just got to scoop up the game. We just can't beat that. Is Ignister of high rarity? Yeah, the extra deck is actually rinsing. Um, I had to disenchant pretty much my entire collection. Yeah. I still have my three decks. And then I bought two... I bought one bundle of the uh, highest tier for the gem. So it's about £25. So probably about $35 or something. Yeah. And then I bought the cheapest one to get enough gems to, to craft that deck. The, uh, the water one's a common... And so is the dark one. The fire and light ones are rares. The field spells are super. The search spells are super. The two monster reborn spells are rares. The draw three is a common, apparently. Uh, the green one's a common, and the shields are rare. Like, it is a very cheap deck if all you want is the adding Nisser stuff. But then, like, your yeah, access code talkers are ultras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your access code talker is, uh, is expensive. Uh, you need all of you need all of those super rares and stuff because you're using uh, AI arrival uh, to search for all of your cards. So you kind of have to have those extra deck cards, even though you know you're never going to summon them. You need them for your search to work. So it gets kind of expensive on that. You have a royal access code talker. I do, and like how, how does that actually, I can't say that. I've got a royal flush. Um, I don't even know what it's called. I think it's royal rarity uh, AI arrival. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I met you. You have. Um, I'm sorry, I right. sorry, yeah, I met you. The uh I, I needed a second access code talker to play this deck through Nibiru and crafted one and I got this. And uh Zohair was so upset that I went out of my way to make sure that this was the only one I ever summoned in all of my duels. <laughs> <laughs> I always do yeah, whenever I got a search for it by um AI hey, met you. Uh it's always it's always the royal one. And I, I normally I'd always play the same rarity of every card of the deck, but like you've gotta have things to flex on. I actually hope that there's a way to show off more of these royal kind of cards in the game in the long term but this deck was an absolute monster i adored playing it and getting to plat one felt very satisfying and it's it's got so many ways to come back and play through opponent's field are you just crafting exodia casually cool. yeah while, while you're fair. talking i'm just getting a set of exodia i accidentally crafted a glossy leg did not mean to do oh. that <laughs> You just sit there just constantly disenchanting, you're enchanting, uh, recreating cards just so you can get the glossy finishes on. Um, but I felt whenever I had this deck, there was so many of my hands felt easy to play that I could I could do stuff with essentially. That was one of the, the main things I was really looking forward to. And I I, I did I only saw the guy in bronze I played against on day one and he had the full power Ag Mr. deck. I didn't see anybody else in Plat playing it. Oh, oh. The suspense is killing me. The suspense is killing me. Ah! <laughs> Raise accelerator. Oh, you know what? I do love um, 
Volcanics. I absolutely adored that archetype in GX. You're probably not going to play it nowadays, but it was really good for a long time. And that card, uh, Blade Accelerator. Listen, man, this is 10 ultra rare crafting points. <laughs> it's still it's still <laughs> worth something. It's still worth something. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, the biggest problem I had was uh, Eldlix. Uh, you just have to scoop those up. Uh, Drytron, I found that those games were, even if my opponent did set up perfectly, I, they were still winnable, but you needed a Kaiju. If you didn't open the Kaiju and they opened perfectly, that game was unwinnable. Because uh, you just can't deal with uh, Herald of Ultimateness or the Herald of Perfection. Uh, Sky Striker, absolute buy. Like, I don't, I, I can't see how people are climbing playing Sky Striker. In fact, you played Sky Striker for a bit. Like, how did that go? It went amazingly well. The only reason I switched to Adagnister was the realization that the season ended in like four days, and it would take me a month to finally get that. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Bolt Spider. The, the, the matches would take like half an hour for one game, and I just, it was like, win four times to, thank you, uh, Bakamon90. Um, like, I got plat four, and it was like, now win four more for plat three, now win four more for plat two, and it was just like, if you lose even once, now you gotta win five times to like, raise one thing, and it's like, this is literally three hours, it's going to take oh, me actually, like, a day per rank. <laughs> with that logic, that it's not 51% doesn't guarantee that you'll get to plat one, because if you're losing the motion game you then all of a sudden add five games to your backlog no it, it's fine. it's you start off in the middle of each one like you need four to go up but if you lose it's now five if you lose again it's now six if you lose again okay, it's now yeah. seven and if you lose with eight you go down uh, okay. so like if you lose four you go down if you win four you go up but if like you lose three now you need to win eight to go up one and it's like okay that's four hours with this sky striker deck i've got a of solo mode to complete, and an article to write, and a job to do, and a life to live. So I switched to the yeah, Ignister yeah. deck, because you win duels in like three and a half minutes with it. So I got plat it's... one in like an hour and a half. It, yeah, it was so good. But I don't understand how people are... Sky Striker feels like you're trying to play Yu-Gi-Oh! When all of the other decks are very specifically trying to not let you play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> so like, Imperial Order, you're pretty much just scooping to that, right? Uh, Skill Drain, goes and Match, your Eldlick matchup must be horrendous. Trying to play through uh, Drytron with Sky Striker seems really bad. Sky Striker was a complete buy for me at Ignister because, like, it got even more dirty when you could just kaiju and then they turn off their entire back row. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to combo kill you now. Um, so that was, I think that was, like, of all the top decks, the one that I wouldn't be so keen to try and climb with would be Sky Strikers. Uh, I, I would do Eldritch, but I have no idea how that mirror match goes and it must take forever. <laughs> Like, and I just, I just kind of feel like, uh, yeah, I have a job and stuff like that. It's just going to take too long to, to, to climb through that. Uh, uh, Drytron, I also really like. I feel like that's a deck where if you learn all the combos, like, it's, it feels very powerful having the... Uh, I think uh, it got mentioned recently that, what is it, Eva went to zero in the TCG. There were some yes. changes. Actually, it's almost funny because all of the changes that the TCG, I think, made, if you play Master Duel... Every single one of them, you go, yeah, oh, that kind of makes sense. After playing with it for about 10 minutes, it's just like, yeah, yeah, that kind of kind of makes sense now. Uh, Imperial Order, absolutely it's playing far. Skill Drain, uh, you know, all, all these kind of really difficult cards to play around. And Eldex playing like the majority of them, right? Yeah. That's like their whole goal <laughs> is to do that. Uh, I, I will say that the only, like, change on the TCG list, not to dwell on it too much, that I didn't completely understand is Luna Light Tiger going to one. That is just not okay. But everything else made enough sense. Oh, I did play against the uh, Liralist desk. Uh, the, sorry, the Troy Brigade Liralist deck. And I almost, very almost broke through their starting Samorg board, where they had the Utopia with the Negate, the Samorg, the... The gate bird that you return to hand, the Miss Valley card, and they also had the Exe with like five materials on it that bounces every time you special summon. Yeah, uh, assembly. I went down to zero materials, and I'm like, if I literally had one more extender in my hand, I could break this board. Like, I was that close uh, playing through all of that, and I'm like, who decided that this card, the um, the boss monster, the Exe, that you can just keep bouncing that card? What do you say it was called? Uh, assembly, I believe, Ensemble, something like that. Ensemble. Who decided that should be once per turn? <laughs> That's disgusting. It was long I, enough I, ago. I it might have been you, <laughs> but uh... yeah, well, you know what? Like, 
I, I have been guilty for bragging about not, cars not having one to return, but like, again, I'm going to talk about Master Duel onwards. Yeah. But I, honestly, I will say, I, I did Duel Luna Light one time, and they the stuff that they play it's one of my replays like when we get to it like you'll see why i have a problem with tiger when you see this replay it is unreal what this luna light deck plays through and then i have them top decking and they from one card make an entire board again and play through another three negates like it's tiger is a problem <laughs> Yeah, in fact, uh, now that we've covered that, should we should we just jump into the replays, guys? Are you uh, ready to see some some of us talking about uh, our our experience with the whole thing? Oh, it hit day ten minutes ago with daily reset. There you go. Oh, good old block dragon. Block dragon's a great card. <laughs> I was I was on the block dragon train for so long. You have no idea. And I had people laughing at me saying, "Oh, it's block dragon. It's terrible." I was like, "No, no, 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 no. Trust me. One day this card will be good. This card is too good. Any card that says search for free cards." Is good. Did you know it's at three in Master Duel? I'm not going to play it. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was happy to be right. Uh, actually, that's not true. Not any card that says so. Right, so you've got that uh, Jamba Magic, haven't you? Oja Magic, yeah. Oja Magic, yeah. There's, there's a really silly thing. You, there's no way you'd get away with it anymore, but in 2012, maybe 2011, it was quite a while ago, I had a deck that would, like, creature swap them Ojama Blue and beat it up to search for Country and Oja Magic. You would activate Country and discard Oja Magic to get the blue back and search for the three vanillas. Then when the blue died again, it would get red and Delta Hurricane. So you could summon red to summon the three vanillas and Delta Hurricane their board. That's pretty cool. I actually <laughs> like that gooey 188 comp there. Why did they have to power creep every Dragon Rule with the Lego Dragon? Yeah, Block Dragon better than Dragon Rule. Eventually I was right to that level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Dragon Rulers. Yeah, they're literally like... Master Duel format is traditional, just without any of the good cards. Like, you're playing a scuffed pot of greed when you play Desires. You're playing a scuffed painful choice when you play uh, Pot of Prosperity. Uh, you're playing, like, Gozen Match and stuff like that. And it's just like, yeah, if you think of all of the absolutely ridiculous cards, they're not legal. Like, Max C would be a lot less good if you're having to use it in response to your opponent's Confiscation or Delinquent Duo activation, right? How do you deck out an Exodia deck? Wouldn't he be guaranteed to draw the five pieces? I did see. He forgot to put one piece in the deck. I, I did <laughs> see a like, oh, tweet no. yesterday <laughs> where a guy played like, one day of peace and both players drew Exodia at the same time, and it played the big animation and then just says draw. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I want to see what Destiny board looks like. But I can't be bothered up a friendly duel with someone with Destiny board in the deck just so I can see what it works. Like. <laughs> did they make uh, the F an ultra rare? I haven't actually looked at Destiny board. Oh, uh, I. Just why would you? <laughs> it's just like no point. It's like there's casual, and then there's it's only a super. Destiny board. It's a legacy pack super, definitely. Oh, it's final as well. It's not even. Uh... Oh no, it's final instead of death, right? Yeah, it's, it's final for us. So I'm sure if you have the Japanese client, they'll say death instead. Hmm. All right. So should we jump into your first replay? Sure. Or you can grab one of mine. I uh, don't know. Dealer's choice. Uh, we'll start with my burn one, just because we were talking about that deck for a little bit. Yeah, go on then. So this is uh, the Cyber Dragon deck that I saw in Silver that I mentioned. Uh, I'll just like, right. let it load up. Okay, let's... Uh, Cyber I Dragon this replay feature, does not so. like when you don't have monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of sets that on the card, right? Mm. All right, so Jonas pulls it as soon as you start. Right. So, so, obviously, I've got the trap hole pit because of trap trick, and I've got fire because it's burn. Um, you can see that I'm like only halfway through solo because of monolith, but this is... <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's my token buddy because I just haven't finished it yet. Like, <laughs> you know really is pet is just cooler than the one I start. It's cooler than the car they gave me when I was leveling my account. Yeah, nothing says Yu-Gi-Oh! Champion like a 2007 Toyota Corolla, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, uh, what I've got in my hand is two draw cards, two burn cards, and then Pot of Desires, which is, I, I guess, also a draw card. But in burn, you have three different identities. You have a burn card, a defense card, or a draw card. Um, ultimately, it's about doing 8,000 damage, so you can tell if it's worth using a card or not by how much damage it does. I have five cards to start with, so each would have to do 1,600 to win the game. So if I flip up Secret Blast and only do 300 with it, 
That's pretty objectively terrible. When you have something like Pot of Duality, that doesn't do any burn damage, but it replaces itself with either another draw card to replace itself, or a, a burn card. And then when you have something like Threatening Roar, similarly, it gets you a draw phase, so it replaces itself as if it were a draw card. Um, right. So ultimately, I've got five cards. If I want to OTK, they need to do 1,600 each. Next turn, they would have to do 1,400 each because you have a seventh, a sixth card. And by turn eight, they only have to do 1,000 each. So the longer the game goes on, the less value you need per card. And when you have something like Desires giving you a plus one, you actually accelerate that turn clock by one invisibly. So when yeah. I look at this, I see like Ojama Trio will boost Blast's damage by 900 and let Balance draw an additional three cards, which is really nice. My only problem with playing Pot of uh, Duality in this deck is it tells your opponent that you're doing something suspicious. Right. Like, no, what, what I play is like, I don't, my opponent like, sees three burn cards, like, nothing suspicious happening here, opponent, just move along. Just like, that was my problem playing Duality, because then they play differently. They put less cards on the field, they start making extra link plays to burn off cards <laughs> and resources. Whereas, like, you play this Pot of Desires before saying any cards, your opponent's going to be part, like, considering throwing down Ash Blossom immediately. Right. right? I, I set the two before I played Desires specifically to discourage Ash Blossom because I wanted to make it look like I had something more sinister planned. Okay, I see. So you were actually mind gaming the opponent. Yeah. Now, this engage, this is just to get the Hornet drones, but they have no idea what deck I'm on. And because I have a couple back row, they could be Widow Anchors, they could be anything. So this okay. now becomes like waste your ash on this, the card, so that they don't use it on Card of Demise. Yeah, yeah. it's essentially trying try to bait the. Uh, right. Bait them on and you're less. It also more. means that because both that and Desire is resolved, there is absolutely no way on earth Messi has an Ash Blossom in his hand. So now Carter Demise is extraordinarily safe to play. Yeah. I mean, the only problem is, it's like, you're going to chuck two cards out. And that's, oh, and that's okay. I didn't hit pause in time. But that's okay. I don't need Balance of Judgment to draw cards anymore. And I can yeah. summon Lilith if I really want to. Yeah, I mean, this is a really, really strong stock. For you. Yeah, I, mean, I, I choose not to because in order for Lilith to use the trap, I have to use her this turn, and I already have five cards set. But because yeah. I have Ojama Trio, Just Desserts is now live at 1,500. Oh, oh Java Trio and the Cyber Dragon opponent. That's so, oh, so delightful. The salt <laughs> is going to be unreal. Now, another thing that's really nice is that there's now five cards in my graveyard for snow as well. Like, that's another thing that, like, Carter Demise and stuff like that yeah. just gives you. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter that it drew two. All it has to do is draw one, and I just keep my numbers at 1,600. This one does 15 by summoning Hayate. This is going to do 15, and this is going to do 9 if I only use it on Ojama Trio. If I wait for him to play a card, it will do 12. So I it's am... when they go to destroy it, right? If, yeah, <laughs> so if they... they decide to MST it, it'll do 1,000 more to them as well. It'll do 1,300 in, uh, in response... Or, sorry, 12... No, no, 13. It's 1,300 if they MST it, plus 9 more from the Ojama Trio, so... Like, if they I actually mean, do MST it, it's just the end of the game for them, but... You can win games off of your opponent just negating the activation and destroying your uh, Secret Blast, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, because they will take the Fizen from it. Oh, okay. Uh, to answer that question in chat, um, isn't Lilith quick? Yes, Lilith is a quick effect, but if I wait until their turn to use her, the trap it sets can't be used to that turn. And I didn't want to... <laughs> just give them a monster to summon Cyber Dragon with, looking at this big I mean, it, infinity it, pet. It has got the infinity pet. <laughs> like, it, it's just a card I didn't need when I want to be able to activate Hornet drones and I can't control a monster. And a big thing that made Burn uh, bad in the past was that people would use things like Chain Strike. So, like, again, if he summons Breaker the Magical Warrior and picks Chain Strike, what am I going to do? Chain just desserts and then Chain Strike so that Chain Strike does 900 instead of 400? If I waited for him to summon any other monster and then just desserts them for a thousand, it would be 14 instead of nine. I literally would do more damage waiting for a second monster and not using my trap card. So the sooner you use your traps, the worse off you usually are. It's about using them when you want to, not when your opponent makes you. And things like Accumulated Fortune force you to use all of your cards prematurely. And that's what makes like the burn deck bad. It's why, like, Chain Strike went to one because that's how everybody played the deck. But the reality is, Chain Strike was the worst card in their deck. I guess Accumulated Fortune was worse, but yeah. If you want to run this through, yeah, you get the Infinity Pet for the mind games. 
You probably let this work, because actually one of the things I really like about this burn deck, if you're unfamiliar with the meta, is it doesn't matter what your opponent's cards do. Mm -hmm. Like, you just kind of, like, you're ignoring it. You're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! You're not playing the same game. You're playing math. You're just, like, going, okay, I need to get this much damage down to win the game. My cards need to be worth this much efficiency. Right. Unless my opponent's cards have the gates, and then I kind of have to read about it. But all the combos and stuff they're doing... I'm barely trying to interact with that. I don't need to. I mean, yeah, you can raise your win percentage if you know when to ring destruction, but for the most part, you're just like, I'm just trying to kill you with my cards. You do whatever you want over everybody. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, we're not playing the same game. So I, I did take a peek and see he only had five cards in his extra deck, and they were likely all Cyber Dragon fusion monsters. But I didn't want to give him the opportunity to link the tokens off anyway. So you do it in the end phase, so that you can burn him once now, and then once more in his draw phase with the cards you draw for turn. So that you get to use those tokens twice before they get linked away. It's like, here's your fat, meaty Ojama guys that will now cost you, like, half of your life points. Like, just kaboom. And then I'm going to get to draw for turn, use Reckless Greed, and see two more cards. And then whatever cards I set, I'm going to get to use those tokens plus. again. So as long as I, like, at this point, it's 1850 per card. So, God forbid I see another Just Desserts to get 2,500. There's already 1,500 <laughs> of it set right here, right? So, yeah. So, so there's yeah, Secret Barrel, Secret two Barrel. per card. He's on nine, so that's 1,800 of the 1,850 I needed. So, just uh, Reckless Greed needs to draw... Uh, I've got 1,800 and 1,500 is 33. Reckless Greed needs to draw a card that can do 500 damage. Now, to be fair, you can just Secret Barrel and you've got 2,000 off of it in that draw step, right? Right. So, naturally, I go for this. Uh, there are a lot of people who ask, like, why wouldn't you just go for the Hayate? Hayate? Why would you risk, like, them negating this? And the answer is, if they Veiler it, it turns into Hayate. If they Ghost Ogre it, you still get the spell back. Like, it doesn't matter what they do to it, it still turns into Hayate anyway. Yeah. So it's always worth going for the Kagari. If you have it. It's an Ultra, it's optional, it just doubles the amount of burn damage this stupid spell gets to do. But uh, I end up drawing another Reckless Greed and an Engage. I didn't get a burn card. It was tragic. And then he had the enemy controller to take my guy and then give it back to me in a monster zone. At which point I was like, oh no. But then I remembered I'm playing against a Cyber Dragon player. So he's going to Chimera tech my machine. So I didn't, like, I had nothing to worry about anymore. And that's when I knew I had game. Because I'm going to get to access code talker him next turn. Wait. Sorry, you've got you've got a couple of steps over. You're gonna access code talker your opponent. I am going to oh. access code talker my opponent for six next turn. Yes. For for this, sorry, with the these resources you have in front of you, you're gonna get to access code talker. Yes, because I had Ray off of this no matter what, so I had two bodies. I drew Snow, so there's my second body anyway. But there was no way for him to kill me, and the game is now over. <laughs> so now he sets this, and in my head I'm like, okay, that could be just about anything, but God forbid it's Gear Town. So what it actually is, is this card in his hand can't be Imperm, because as long as that's on the board, that field spell's on the board, he can't Imperm me from the hand. So if I clear this one back row, the game is over. Okay. I love how you're going to go access code, cool card. Yes. I, I don't, I'm not even going to lie. That's just... Yeah, the burn deck just suddenly... Oh, I'll just, I'll just switch to access code, cool win. So we're just going to flip things down, get them out of the way. And then abuse the fact that there's a Sky Striker link of every single attribute. And <laughs> just cycle through all of the different See, colors. Yeah, you guys speed this up, because, uh... <laughs> I completely, yeah, I, I completely overlooked that, that the Sky Striker's a little different. Which is, surprisingly, is one of the reasons I think they're kind of unplayable. It goes and matches it, what, free in this game? Yeah, but you have, a uh, Zeke is dark from Ray is dark, and then Zeke banishes a card on the field, so it's not usually that big a deal. Oh, so you can't actually, Sky Striker can't actually get rid of Gozen. Yeah, there's also yeah, like, there's also like, um, Afterburners destroys a back row if there's three spells. Yeah, the, oh, that's true. I guess you've got some. Yeah, at this point, Axis Code Talker just like banishes one of each attribute, and there's literally all six attributes in my graveyard. <laughs> so it just I'm wipes his entire like field. Captain and Captain Planet is mad that the burn plan didn't go according to work out. <laughs> Oh my god, that was disgusting. Yeah, I'm just gonna play all these burn cards and still kill your access code talker. And like, even I if Lina didn't have a light to bring back, Snow can bring herself back to make the link three. Uh, it's also an extra 18, 1850 damage if you needed to reach. Yeah, uh, I mean, she still was even in that board. She was another 1850 damage there. <laughs> that's, 
That's hilarious. Uh, should we move on to the next one then? Uh, let's watch one of yours next. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We can move through one of mine. Uh, we can start with my, one of my bronze replays. It was actually a really good game, despite the fact it was in bronze tier. It was uh, my opponent was someone who was uh, bought a full Agnista deck uh, straight out of the gate, and I had no idea what any of that card. Uh, so it's just a case of like, I'm gonna wait and see what happens, and then I'll figure out where I'm gonna go from here. All right, we've got the Matorigus avatar on the screen. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. This is a shout out to Nearly Not Quite Gaming who uh, created me this new little avatar since we're not using our webcam right now. <coughs> okay, so this is the Galaxy deck. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, I, I was playing Galaxy. I used this to climb all the way to plat initially because back in the back in the day when I was working for KDE, I used to play. This was like my casual go-to deck. It was good enough for winning games. I mean, it did have serious problems when you got to the top level of competitive play, but like. If you're having drinks with the R&D team, like it was a fun deck to play. You had the anime vibes with it, so you could just have a good laugh of it. And ultimately in those sections, while some people would show up to those drink sessions with meta decks, we want to have fun. We're not there to like play a YCS level game uh, after a whole day of meetings or something. So Galaxy was like my go-to deck. And it's something that I really enjoy playing. And I really like the cards. I, I love all of them. I love how they work together, how they flow together. <laughs> um, one card I do, this like is the I did end up taking the trade ins out of the deck, uh, but if you want to just go ahead and play it, sure. Uh, the I'm only thing I do you, know, <laughs> the only thing yeah. I know about your deck is stop this guy and you win unless they have this card. So I'm looking at your hand and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> My opponent, I've got no interaction whatsoever. My opponent is playing top tier Agvister, and I'm just gonna have to let him do whatever the hell he wants. And then I'm just gonna figure it out afterwards. What am I? What do I do to get back into them? So just go ahead and hit the uh, speed up button on this. You can kind of watch the whole combo because you're gonna see a bunch of Agnista combos when we discuss some of our replays a little bit later. Mm. But yeah, this deck is absolutely disgusting. I don't understand why I'm not seeing more of it on the ladder, and it might just be because Eldritch uh, is causes this deck so many problems. Or is it because of the complexity of the combos in this deck? Uh, it's because if you do like. The, the combo itself is super linear, but when you have to freestyle because you get interrupted, then it becomes really difficult to play, and it's hard to keep track of like what everyone does because they all have two effects. I have seen so many people throw game when they have the red guy in the... Oh, he already got rid of it. When you have the red guy in your graveyard, you can like negate an attack in the damage step so it doesn't cause a replay, and people just give away games because they don't do that. So uh, The red guy destroys the guy attacking. It destroys the guy being attacked. Yeah, uh, if like if you were to summon your oh. if you were to summon your Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon and smack this thing for eleven thousand, he can banish the red guy from the graveyard to pop this thing, and you'll do zero damage. And it was the damage step, so you don't get a replay. Uh, okay, right. So I also have done that before when I was about to win a game and destroyed my monster attacking. I was like, oh, whoops! I didn't mean to activate the red guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I Punted a game in Platinum 2 uh, to Sky Strikers when I was about to attack for Lethal. And, and I, the red guy popped up and said, Do you want to activate the red guy? And I'm like, Sure. And I'm like, Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, God. <laughs> cancel, cancel. He's going for 6,000 arrival. That's really funny. <laughs> this is the I greediest play. Right. So I read my opponent's card and I realize this is, this is Towers uh, on steroids. And I'm like, All right, he's a bit natty. He's been at the gym. Uh, how. What can I do to beat? Can I beat this? Is there a card in my deck that gets over this? He's unaffected by everything. And I realize that I'm going to have to caveman out of this. And my only way of actually beating it is just a flat out attack over it. Episode 120, Matt. So it's just like, all right, we're going to we're gonna just literally pick up our, our big heavy club and we're going to hit that thing for harder than 6,000. So we start off with a blind MST and it pays off. Yeah, you hit a called by. I, I disagree with blind MSTs, but it worked out, so... Oh, well, it's a case of like, I'm either winning this turn or I'm losing next turn. <laughs> so we're just going to go for the blind MST. And our goal is to make prime material photon dragon. So if you just play it through till I get to that point, uh, you'll essentially see how I get to it. Oh no, Baylor. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. So but my opponent makes that thing and has like, called by the grave, effect Baylor. Yeah, a lot of stuff goes wrong. A lot of stuff goes wrong. So this gets you soul flare from the two tokens, right? Yes, I actually misplayed horribly in this game, and it should have killed me, but I got really lucky. Because I would have, um, but I'll cover that in a little bit. So yeah, so Soul Flare is really strong, it lets me get back my trade-in target, which is the key card for us to win the game. 
Yeah, this is, like I said, the only way to win the game against Galaxy is to negate that right there. And then if they have this card for a follow-up anyway, you still lose. Because <laughs> there he is, this piece of garbage. <laughs> Afterglow is so good. Afterglow is kind of underrated, to be honest. So if you want to pause it for people who aren't familiar, Afterglow, when it's attached from a material, uh, you can activate it to special summon a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Or add it as a material. So I, I didn't notice a bit where you could add it as a material until I got into playing this deck a little bit later on in my ladder experience. Um, and then if you activate during the battle phase, the attack of all number of monsters get double. And of course, Prime Material Photon Dragon uh, massively increases its attack based on the number of uh, XE ranks on the field, essentially. So what you do is you detach the Afterglow you go up to like 5600 and Afterglow doubles it to 10k and you swing over just about anything for, for game. And of course, even if a Prime Material Photon Dragon actually only does 50% uh, of its damage, if it doesn't have uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as a material. But the trick is that you can use Afterglow to attach the Photon Dragon to it so that you have that even if you don't necessarily start the combo. So yeah, we go for that. Opponent has Forbidden Chalice. So this is the third piece of interaction our opponent has in addition to their towers monster, but we're completely fine with this because this doesn't actually negate um, afterglow. Our afterglow, and actually uh, takes away the effect where he's going to take half damage. So our opponent was actually dead on that swing if they didn't have the AR challenge. Or were they dead? No, they were. They were going to be very, very low uh, had they done that. So I make a huge misplay here. I forget that the solar flare is only once per turn. And that's going to come back to bite me, as you'll see in just a second. I really love that, like, the fields break as you lose life points. Oh, that's a nice touch. That's a nice touch. It's extra tilting. We always like to tilt oh, our opponents. And you also pointed it at a used zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was a complete mess. A mess of a turn. Like, if you want to punch a game right back to your opponent, this is how you do it. We call it the map bell. We forget that there's not once, there's a once per turn clause on your solar flare. And then you give up two great cards, which actually would have um, put me into a position to win next turn had I not given those up. So it would have made it so my opponent had to answer two of my big things. Because I'm going to, you'll see on my draw. But yeah, this is like the Atta Vista deck going again, like w one card. <laughs> and he's just going to be able, well, they, we should be honest, because uh, Ulrich, I don't know who, who they are, are able to rebuild. And yeah, they're just going to go up and uh, sweep our sweep our build. That that was a curious so, decision on their part. I didn't. Here, here's how if here's how we'd win the game this turn if we hadn't made the solar flare. I only had one in the extra deck. Is you just play the uh, photon sanctuary, make the solar flare, get back galaxy knight, summon galaxy knight, get back galaxy Ice photon dragon, make any rank eight, beat target opponent in the face. But because we are we were a bit cave, we were too heavy in the caveman, going to try and be cave chat that we made our only solar flare. Uh, again, when it wasn't for turn. <laughs> but you drew this anyway, so who cares? This is the dumbest extender in the deck, I swear to God. No, 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 it does nothing unless you have a level 5 or higher photon monster. So I literally draw a blank. <laughs> because I didn't have the extra solar flare. And if you want to know how I found this galaxy deck, I actually just used the public deck search tool for galaxy deck, and I copied the first one, and this is the first iteration of it. I made some changes to it because I climbed through the ladder, but I just like wanted to jump in. I was like, yeah, I like galaxy. Just how are that. you not dead right here? Oh, yeah, we should 1,000% be dead. Like, but by the, <laughs> the grace that... By the grace of something, we somehow manage to hold on by the skin of our teeth. We hold this position. We shouldn't, under any circumstance. He I has Monster be... Reborn in his hand! Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he, he also gets the uh, Dark Templar back as well. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, all the Attic Vistas are pretty low on the attack, so... Yeah, but this thing, like, this was a rank 4 or link 2 before entering battle phase. Yeah, yeah, but the link 2s that you're playing in that deck, right, are pretty low attack, so, like... Update Jammer into okay, Splash yeah. Mage. He never used okay, access yeah. code talker on okay, you. Yeah. <laughs> a, 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 either doesn't have those cards or they miss lethal. Like, we get, I get lucky because I've punted this game. I would have, uh... I would have won on the previous turn had I just not made Solar Flare, because I would have just made it this turn. Um, so yeah, opponent sets us up, and like, we're all in at this point, whatever we draw, we have to, we have to win this turn. And we're gonna go all anime on this, like, 
I, I, I love that I can sit in my, my, my apartment by myself and shout, Ultimate Folk on stream. And it means something to me, and no one else gets to hear it or complain about it. Max. Yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take the Maxi challenge. Like this opponent came here to play some real Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the worst Maxi I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> like of <laughs> course you, you're not gonna pass turn. You lose if you do. Of course you're gonna oh, play. Yeah. Like yeah, and then we get to just make another Afterglow. We don't have another Prime material to go for it, but I find one better because we just need to activate in fact in the battle phase, right? Oh no! <laughs> battle phase? Oh, if you activate an effect in the battle phase, I gain a thousand additional attack, and I can attack again. And you've left a phoenix in attack mode, my buddy. You played some bad. You played some Yu-Gi-Oh that sets me up here, and my opponent rage put. They actually disconnected. So yeah, we are uh, ultimate photon stream our opponent straight out of the game. And I, I honestly got after I played this, that connection fell. That was a disconnect. Like my opponent, like I'm really grateful for this player. I don't know where he is on the. They are on the ranks right now, but. It made me get invested in Master Duel from playing through that and like actually having to think about how do I get through this? I don't know what the cards do. And it really inspired me to keep playing. Because I, I imagine if I'd have been playing like Eldlix all the time in the beginning, I'd have been like, ah, I just kind of don't want to invest in this. But even though it's, uh, for this season's climb, probably the player I am most grateful for. My best match is that top one, but we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. That, that was by far my absolute. Uh, most difficult match I played the entire season. Hey, Defined Key, welcome to the chat. Hoping you're enjoying this. Uh, yeah, do you want to jump into your next replay and walk us through it? Sure. So, uh, I I played Burn a lot. Like, it, it, it literally climbed me to Plat 1. And then uh, I, I decided, like, I have all these things that are legal that aren't in the TCG, and I want to experience those so i just built what i called the ocg deck and it's just using all the like dumbest things like for like fairy tale snow that you're allowed to use in master duel and uh for anyone who's like from my uh Yu -Gi -Oh classroom especially or just even the org server in general i'm i'm pretty well known for the card gizmek orochi which is actually three times better with fairy tale snow legal so this next one is literally just Orochi and Snow the duel against uh, whoever Kara Kara is. Nice, friendly Defi player. Uh, Defiant Key, yeah. We are going for our replays for some of the matches that we thought were really enjoyable. We played on our climb up to Platinum 1. Uh, and we're just running through our decisions, what we were thinking while we were playing those decks uh, and stuff. And it, that's just like, I find what I've got to play that focusing on being entertaining to the chat and also not messing up your combo is a little bit challenging so just going over replays it sort of lets lets us have that level where we can interact with the chat a little bit more and have a conversation whilst also like talking about some some fun games yeah so so you can see from my setup i've now completely finished solo mode and this oh, is yeah, where yeah, i was this, like yeah <laughs> this was time this is, to take it seriously <laughs> this is uh, top top tier uh free to play gamer uh cosmetic this is like <laughs> this is the, the absolute best of the best you could get free to play cosmetics even if the Karagiri Barry's uh, barrel is pretty cool, or like some of the other pets, this is this is the end game. This is the reason we play solo mode for this board pet. Uh, so like the uh, digital bug base and the monarch uh, graveyard zones and like the big world shield and everything. Yeah. So <coughs> this deck, there there is no main strategy to it. I guess at its core, it's a Sky Striker deck, but that's just because Engage says draw one. This is just, no matter what five cards you draw, your hand is amazing, the deck, and you just throw your entire hand at your opponent every single game and hope that they drew at least one unusable card and therefore you win because you have more good cards than they do. So like in the event that an Adagnister player opens like a second copy of the field spell, congratulations, you just won the game, is the, the basic mindset behind this utter monstrosity. So I'm staring down four unknowns and a hand trap, but... I've got my Snow and my Orochi, so at this point, I don't care. Ooh, I could really you make it on your opponent's side. In fact, you don't even need to because it's the way your deck works. But, right. Like, it can't be Eldlick because they've set a monster, and that would be weird because it'd be setting a hand trap, which makes no sense. <laughs> it's... So, there's the Ash. First interrupt out of the way. Cool. Engage did its job. Didn't even have three spells anyway. 
have the called by, may as well use it. I'm not going to use it on this card. And the goal is to actually play every card. So called by has traded with Ash, means I now have... I was on six to his five. I'm now on five to his four. If you've ever played chess, you know that like once the queens are off the board, if you're up material, you trade pieces. So yeah. I've got four cards of his four cards. This is my extra card. May as well make it work. And I just trades with Soul and Judgment. So cool. Now I've just got four cards to his three. There is no card that generates more advantage than Gizmek Orochi, the Serpent on Sky Slasher. In your opponent's end phase, you can summon him, then on your turn, use his effect to pop a card. He is just a plus two every time you get a draw phase. Pluses mean a lot less nowadays in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> they don't in a deck like this. You'll notice there's only two cards left on the field. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you've definitely uh, leveraged your opponent high. Uh, actually, for nearly not quite, uh, that was somebody that I used to cast with our uh, actual YCSs, and I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed it. I, I miss you too. Uh, but back to the game, yeah, do you wanna... So, he plays this, and my immediate thought was, I could use Imperm on it for no reason, other than to just turn off this back row. Because it's 50-50 that it's the back row that he wants it to be. But I was like, nah, let's see like what he does with it. And he just crashes it. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And it's because this thing's double call the Haunted, and he only had one body. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't play your uh, Imperm now, because... Uh, so... Yeah, you just try to maxi out. It's just, it's whatever, it's maxi. But I've got Orochi, and I'm like, okay, so this is that Utopia deck. He can't kill you through Orochi. It can't happen. So I'm not worried. He can do, like, his double or nothing crap. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to die. So we're going to Imperm that, obviously. So I'm getting the double or nothing, right? And he's got the counter trap anyway. Number protection. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, as far as I'm concerned... This traded for numbers protection, and I've just got Valor, Snow, Rose, and Orochi against Utopia Double. So he sees that it's not game. He just goes for Utopia Ray to set up the two negates. So this guy says, well, it's equipped with something. You can negate a targeting effect. And the equipped guy says, once per turn, negate a targeting effect. It's like this weird silver twin Pegasus thing. So that's whatever. Now, it's his end phase, so just summon Orochi again. Nothing matters. Draw for turn. <laughs> Now, Orochi can banish three from my extra deck to pop, and he'll just negate that. That'll flush one of his two negates, but this thing also halves the attack points of what it negates. So I want to right, try okay. and not waste Orochi on having that negate it. But I also have Snow. So Snow is just going to try and do that, and he'll negate it, and cool. And then Orochi can just force the other one. <laughs> like, it, it's just, it is what it is. Orochi just sends three cards from the extra deck I'm not going to use and flush the other negate. And at this point, I can do whatever I want. Oh, is this where you go for access code draw and just win? His I'm Utopia sorry, doubles I... a light. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, with his truck. And the game's just over. All of his cards have been negated. Like, all of his negates have been okay, flushed. Access code talker. Like, access code talker is such a disgustingly good card. Like, I, I can't say enough phrases about how much I love this card. It's such a chat card. It's basically the All Might of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu Master Duel right now. Somebody in the chat called you Small Might earlier today. <laughs> oh, that must have been you had. That was a, that was a joke. Uh, for, for people who don't know me uh, that well in real life, I, I really got into the whole fitness thing uh, for the past couple of years and been really working on the working out and stuff like that. And, like... I'm a huge My Hero Academia fan, so a lot, uh, my friends start calling me Small Mike, uh, <laughs> by comparison. It was endearing. Yeah. <laughs> keeps, you, keeps your ego in check, right? <laughs> uh, we doing another one of your replays. Yeah, this is going to be the same deck, especially since I have like eight replays and you have four. So uh, This is yeah. the same deck, but this one's a little more involved. This is not like my opponent solemned my summon and like reduced his resources. This one's, this is one of the weirdest duels I've ever played. So, the first card my opponent plays is Reasoning. You know what is Reasoning does, the... I assume? Yeah, yeah, I remember Reasoning. I used to play Reasoning back when you used to go for Magician of Black Chaos and summon three of them, and then... Yeah. The game. So, what, <laughs> what what number do you call with Reasoning, Matt? I, I'm i like Aslan here. It's like, don't talk to me about Reasoning. I was there when it was written. <laughs> <laughs> reasoning, you always call one because it's got to be Decatron, right? Right, yeah, it's got to be Decatron. Well, first card... Is 13. another reasoning. Thirteen on that reasoning. Oh, I would, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a 
Yeah. Oh, so he actually reasoning straight up to the Alistair the Invoker. What? This? Oh. I guess there's some logic there, right? You might actually, you might send the invocation to the graveyard and you can get it back. I... But you still need to get the out Al of Alistair to get it back, right? Yeah, well, you could link him off, but like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I I don't understand this at all. Immediately, like, I'm now tilted. I have no idea what the heck Hat is trying to do to me here. But apparently reasoning for Alistair and the normal summon Alistair. You got it, man. <laughs> like, well done. Yeah, and then like that's going to make his light. And then he can play Invocation. And he can make Mechaba and all those good things that Invoked always does. Hey, Skinner Beard. Welcome to the chat. Having a good time. Add back the monster to his hand so that he has a hand trap to make it 35 or a monster to discard for in a gate. And he's going to end his turn with this reasoning to Alistair on the board. Like, cool. Yeah, that was a weird reasoning. Uh, the <laughs> Invoked Mechaba, that card actually was another reason I was struggling to climb with Burn because it's. They constantly have ways to sort of like mess with your mess with your game plan and it's one of the reasons i ended up switching to when i got the platinum it's just like where well, i need to actually play like a serious deck i'm playing against players that are very competent and they're not playing um decks that are going to give you a, an inch to move if you really want to climb yeah so at this point i see one interaction and maybe ash so the goal is flush mechaba like just Play a card. Let's see if he's stupid enough to negate an upstart. He's not. No, okay. No, no, no. He'll negate Hold engage. On. Hold on. I don't, I don't want to be clear here. We should probably not be mean about any of our opponents. Like, the, the, the fact that some of the plays may be questionable to us, you've got to give them the thought of charity that it made sense to them at the time that they made it. Sure. And it doesn't necessarily mean it was the right play, but, like, I, I don't want, for example, any of my opponents, like, if they do catch this on YouTube later or anything, to think, that I would be disrespectful uh, during the game. So. You know, that's fair. I'm sorry to Hado here. If he wanted but, to negate Upstart Goblin, yeah. probably had a good reason, but he didn't. And then you play Engage, and there's no way, again, that someone doesn't negate Engage, so time to see a spell leave his hand. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of have to negate the Engage, because <laughs> you're thinking you're putting on Sky Striker. And right? he discards Witchcrafter Collaboration. And like, I don't know what this card is, but I do know that in the end phase it comes back to his hand, and I'm like, okay, so... Now I still know he has an Alistair in hand, and he's got a couple more unknowns in there. Let's just drop Ray. Yeah. I mean, this is my favorite thing about playing Engage in any of the decks, is that your opponent's immediate thought is, is, is most likely Sky Striker. If it <laughs> resolves, it's great for you, and it flushes opponent's uh, Ash Blossoms, left, right, and center, and, and uh, Corner Gates as well. So I'm on Chaos Sorcerer in this replay because I ran out of Ultra Rares, so I couldn't get a Dogmatica Fleur de Lee, and I needed something to dump with Souls, and Chaos Sorcerer was a common. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, we'll just take the scuffed, uh, the scuffed Fleur. But Souls has this thing that lets me discard two spells to draw two. It's crazy in this deck, terraforming. And... Like, he hasn't, doesn't appear to have any other kind of interaction. There's Orochi, Chicken Game, and Maxi. Three fantastic cards, but none of them Sky Striker, so Souls is just going to stay in play. So, time to Desires, get a couple more cards, and make Zeke, and we're just going to get that off the field for this turn. And that's when he drops this, and this leads back to, like, I forgot this card even existed, but sure enough, like... I targeted a spellcaster, so he gets to summon this card from his hand. And there goes my Zeke. Like, cool. It doesn't negate the effect, but, like, at the very least, I get Ray back, so I'm not, like, left with nothing. But he's got this, like, 2800 zero monster now that, in my standby phase, returns to his hand. He's going to get that spell back to his hand, so... I'm gonna use. Yeah, you also have the Mecha Bus switches back on and gets another negate. Yeah. So you're in a really bad position. And I'm just gonna set all my spells, go into Shizuku, get a search, and Shizuku will weaken his board ever so slightly. And I'm, I get this to make sure I have a monster for next turn because I'm pretty sure Mecha Bus gonna negate Ray coming back. Yeah, and then the Mecha Bus has a negate on your turn as well. And because I'm playing in both, <laughs> they're gonna. I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. Should he so, not summon the Alistair? Would you not summon the Alistair, get an invocation, and... So he has to assume that I have things like Widow Anchors set, so he's yeah. just making sure his guy's big enough to beat Shizuku through me activating uh, more spell cards. But yeah, yeah. It, it's a weird decision. Ray comes back, and he activates that and discards. 
And I'm like, okay, but doesn't that literally like just tell me all of your cards now? And it, it's... I see no perfect information, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I take this 28, it's whatever. And then he's going to get that collaboration back. I don't actually know what the other card in his hand is. I thought I knew the collaboration. I don't until that moment. But he's only got one unknown now. And so he activates Aroru to return it to his hand. And I use Widow Anchor, hoping that he'll try to negate the Widow Anchor with Mechaba because I'm going to get to take his 2800 guy. And he does. But he discards the other card in his hand. Rather okay. than the spell that I knew. So now I have perfect information. Now I know he has collaboration in his hand. At which point it's like, okay, so the rest of this is just free. I can Widow Anchor the Mechaba. And because I still control no monsters, I can Shark Cannon that monster you discarded. And then because I have no monsters, I can also Hornet Drones. And just... I'm just going to play his deck for a little while, because, like you said, I had no cards left. My deck wasn't working, so now I'm just going to play Witchcrafter Invoked for a little bit. <laughs> See, this is the reason I don't play <laughs> Sky Strikers on the ladder at the moment. It's like, even when you play Sky Strikers, you play whatever they're playing. <laughs> so, I I'm just on Witchcrafter Invoked. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And, uh, just going to get Kina here. Everyone's happy. And just take out this Alistair that Reasoning got, and... Uh, I removed with the, oh my god, what's it called? Zeke for a little bit, and it came back. And like, okay, let's see if Area Zero lets me send his guy. Kaiser Coliseum, hey, there's a spell card, wonderful. And another Kaiser Coliseum, so yeah, so there goes yeah, this guy. Kaiser Coliseum's legal in this format. That's... <laughs> gain 100, it's it's... gain it's another 100. Format. And then just, you know, I know his card in his hand, so I'm just gonna like make a BLS.com. And just, like, used his guys. Used a level 7 or higher, thanks to both of his monsters. Did he just call that BlackLusterSoldier.com? Well, yeah, he's... The, I'm not going to call him Black Luster Soldier Soldier of Chaos or whatever. There's, like, 30 different BLSs, but this one's a link, so he's BLS.com. <laughs> I like that. BLS.com. That's an easy way of remembering it. And then he top decks the best possible card he could see in his entire deck. Uh, that's a... <laughs> One that searches for a uh, Witchcrafter card, right? It discards one to special summon. It's Lone Fire Blossom for, like, the win con card of the deck. And uh, then okay. banishes from the graveyard to dump the, like, really good spell. So now both of those spells add back to his hand. And the other spell that he dumps gets to set itself, or activate itself to the field. And, like, I'm looking at this and it's like, okay, if I try and battle this, he's got two spells to discard. Uh, he can reveal any number of spells in his hand. And if he does... Uh, his battling monster gains a thousand attack and defense, so this thing's gonna be 3k next turn, and it'll be 38 if I try and attack it. And then he can discard a spell to negate the effects of my guys. It's like, oh god, like all of a sudden, like things are looking really, really bad for me. And what well, do I have? Kai's the Coliseum. Majority of this match. I'm not gonna lie, the majority of this match things have been looking bad for you. <laughs> Area zero, pick Kai's the Coliseum, and because I'm a Sky Striker player, I'm destined to just whiff with Area zero every time I use it. But. You could still set Area Zero with multi-roll to get a free monster, and all I need to finish this duel is a body, because three and one is still Access Code Talker, <laughs> <laughs> and nothing ever matters when you have Sky Strikers and Access Code Talker. Just comes in, and you can't respond to him. Comes in, just takes a smash, get out of our face. Uh, thanks, Hato, I think his name was, yeah, Hato. Yeah, uh, just Hat, or Hato, something like that. Yeah, that's... That was a good. That was that was a good game. It was, I can see why you were tilted by that. And it's it's one of those things where it's like that's why I switched to Ignister because like look how long the games take, right? Yeah, I can wait. Is there an echo coming through on the stream, guys? Or are we good? Because I can hear myself through my headphones. No, I don't think anyone in the chat is saying anything. So the... No echo. That's cool. All right. Yeah. Do you want to jump to my second one? I can't actually remember. Was. It's always access code, Bix. Always. Yeah, you can see, when we talk about this format and the decks that we climb with, access code talker is all mine. Like, <laughs> he saves the day every day of the week. Like, I want to get a poster of access code talker on my wall. That's how good he was. So. Oh, yeah, this I'm is you on burn. burn. Nice. This is me on burn. I can't remember what I'm playing against, though, this replay. It was important enough that I saved it as one of the ones I wanted for this video. So. 
Uh, let's let's roll it and then we'll I'll just walk it through. So so this one three. is set these three and snow pass and you hold the balance in case of like lightning storms. Uh, that's what a player who was really thinking through. Oh, I remember this now. <laughs> uh, hit the fast forward button. So if I just play Skull Servants and I just want to uh, want to show off sort of like how crazy uh, modern modern Yu-Gi-Oh can actually get if anybody's like a returning player. Uh, that's a nearly not quite gaming uh, question. Maybe at some point my PC is not really good for uh, live streaming. So, as in actual fact, if this is popular, time <laughs> time for the bone zone. Trying to get the channel flag there for uh, being a bit too mature. But essentially, if this goes well, we'll do some we'll do some videos. We'll put them up on YouTube. Uh, we'll do a stream like every now and again, depending on when me and Dan are free, and we can just talk about our, our climb through the ranked format. And oh my god, it's on 7k! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to discuss the entirety of this game, because I'm at this point where I'm just like, I've got no interaction. I'm not here to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm, <coughs> I'm here to just cheese you with my burn cards. So, they are going to get to do anything. And this turn, I think, took... When time it, it felt like it was about 20 minutes. Like, overall. It may not have been that long, but... I, I would feel so bad if I was a writer for the anime and I had to write this duel. Like, ah, my first turn! It's just like the voice actor is gonna be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Skull Dread on. I was like, what is he doing? He already had like two King of the Skull Servants both on 4K and it just wasn't good enough. Now he's got like a Seriuja and a 6K one. There's he just decisions being made that are like, you had it a long time ago. What are you still comboing for? Really, but look, if you look at the deck, like how many cards they got left in the deck? Like <laughs> eleven so cards 11 left cards. in his deck already. All right, there. He's got an eight K one, and a co-linked Nightmare Phoenix. The guys can't die by battle. Lovely. Uh, that's great because we're not we're not here to battle anybody. Come on. <laughs> are they going for? Are they going for the third Levier? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Why would you make a unicorn on turn one? What are you doing? Oh, he's trying to extra link you. Yeah, yeah which is great because we're not we're not trying to use that extra monster zone. <laughs> it goes uh, for the servers. Does he just? Oh, okay. He didn't go for like the double level ones. All right. Wow. What a so, turn. Okay, uh, man, you got it. Yeah, so our, our opponent obviously went full off uninterrupted combo, and my goal is just to deal eight thousand damage. So I'm I'm not too fussed that. Yeah. This guy is doing 210 on their squad. Yeah. yeah we're, we're just we're going to find a way to beat them. So he's got battle proof, destroy proof, and like draw three for turn is what I believe these three do. But like, good. Draw three you for turn. All, yeah, he can have all the cards. They can have all the cards in the world. I just want, draw them. Draw them. You make my secret battles even better. And we've got like two battle turn passes as well. So we're, I'm feeling incredibly safe this game. Yeah, you did it. You said exactly what you're supposed to set. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like how patronizing that indirectly sounds as well. Yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, okay, you yeah, know, this play probably makes sense to your opponent if you're, uh... Tell me he hits both oh, secret oh, blasts. Yeah, 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 this is why I saved the replay. This is why I saved the replay. Ah, <laughs> no way! Beautiful. This is... I would just uninstall the client. If I twin twister two I'm... secret blasts, I would just uninstall Master Duel. After 20 minute turn. Oh my god, this is, this is... Literally, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think I peaked. I don't know if I can have a better day in my life. Like my first kid could be born, and I'm still gonna be like, was it better than the time I got twin twisted on two secret barrels? <laughs> and the kid's gonna have to live up to that. That kid's gonna have to do some pretty crazy stuff to to top that. You have just yeah, desserts so... as half his life, like two thirds of his life. Like he's he's getting greedy enough, like. Yeah, take just asserts. And yeah, we've got two pass to turns, and we've got the snow to make the balance of judgment. Uh, essentially just draw like as many cards as I want. Yeah. Threatening yeah, Roar while well, you uh, still can, yep. And he yeah, yeah he just scoops it up. <laughs> I realizes like that's just the the amount of rage that would have come from that, I can imagine, is and, I, and rightfully so, like your chances of like twin twist <coughs> like that into into a bird play after you've set up perfectly, like I can absolutely Totally understand why why that would be really frustrating. But again, that's the thing. It's like you can get away with stuff like that in a best of one form. Oh uh, the, bird, the bird deck is like very very good for for beating anything that isn't like super 
super top tier meta. This is well, the actually, Lunalite yes, one. Lunar Lights, okay, Lunar Lights. This is uh, Raphael Nevin's deck, who won a YCS with it, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, Chicago, I think it was. It's been a really long time. Was that the name of the YCS or a card? Uh, the city. Yeah, Chicago is like the fifth oh, Chicago. biggest. Chicago, I thought yeah. you said Chicago. <laughs> okay. And I thought you said Chicago. Okay, this must be a new card, a new Lunar Light card, I don't remember. So, I'm pretty sure the only reason I win this duel is because of that Maxi right there. <laughs> yeah, Red Reboot would have been pretty good there. Uh, <laughs> so, he draws Tenki, which is just cool. Like, great. Tenki's a good card. Th this is what I want to see with my life, is Tenki. Because I know this matchup, I've done it so many times, and I know that one of my loss conditions is two Tenkis, and he's already got one of them, and I'm just like, so, welcome. We'll free. You just preemptively max seed there before a special summon, right? So Correct. Why, why have you done that for anybody who's like not... I don't want to see, like, first of all, there is no universe in which I'm not using this Max C this turn. So why yeah. wait for a potential Inherent Summon, like a Link 1, where I wouldn't get the draw for it? I mean, the only argument I'd make against that, and I found that on my own climb, is that if I have to get a draw to make my hand work, I kind of, if I if I just blind pitch it and my opponent passes, I, I really needed that draw to win the game. I, I will try and get greedy with it. Sure, but... I'm but, especially with the nature of my deck. I'm never gonna need that draw. Yeah, that, that one draw is not gonna make a difference. And if my opponent just passes turn, good. I would run a card that said discard this card from your hand to end your opponent's turn. I would play forty of that if you'd let me. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, time wolf, which is a <laughs> magic the gathering card, which just says uh, take an extra turn for two blue mana. I believe. Very very old card back uh, before we had the internet. Now he's obviously he's under maxi, so he's not gonna give me much. Which is fortunate for me. He's just going to end on the drunk Tabor, which is fine. He's not drunk. He's very sleepy. Ah, uh, yes. That's, that is all that you need to know about that card. <laughs> so I, I am still on a very healthy seven cards to his six, which is a position I like to be in, especially since one of his cards is effectively blank. And I've already got a trade card, so trade a card. Get off the field, please. Thank you. Just go for a nice free 3k damage. And this will give me engage access. This can dump engage, go into Kagarian main phase 2, and add back the engage. Like, there's no reason not to go for it. Uh, pretty sure I don't have three spells. Yeah, I've just got the one spell when I get the engage back. But, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. You're just going to play the engage anyway, right? Right. And you play the multi-roll. That way, when uh, Widow Anchor activates on his turn, it can get the engage back. This is the first, like, big misplay I do. I already know he favors this zone with the tiger, I should have put the imperm there and the uh, multi-roll here. Like, they're backwards. Uh, because then I'd have the ability to imperm, like, Kaleido Chick and turn off his tiger forever. Now, if he was good, he'd just bounce it with, like, Martin and put it in the other one. And, like, good for him. But at the very least, I'd have, like, one tiger negate by doing yeah. that. Uh, I always put imperm or continuous speller traps in these zones. Because now if he wants to use Imperm on this, he has to take his Pendulum Zone away from himself. And I also have a higher chance of hitting something because people play Pendulum cards. Yeah. Okay, so... So I'm just going for Shizuku, yeah, going for Shizuku to get the add. I believe it's a Widow Anchor I go for. Yeah. Because it's at two. Oh, and it's a pretty good card. And yeah. you need your opponent's deck to win with Sky Strikers. <laughs> and you so. can't get engaged while it's already in your graveyard, so it is what it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, this is the Souls Garnet, so I could not play Souls that turn. Um, that happened to me six out of eight games, <laughs> despite my deck being 55 cards. It was really annoying. Hey, if you want to play Gem Knight Garnet in your deck, that is a risk you are going to take. <laughs> so You are going to draw it someday. He summons probably the most annoying thing possible, which is bounce all of your opponent's back row and get a body, so... So That's much for Valor. surprisingly good against the burn deck, by the way, guys. Uh, <laughs> when you get the uh, White Rabbit in, it starts like really putting you in an awkward position. So he's now played through a Valor. That, we'll call that like interrupt number one. And now here's the room at all, which is going to pop in Perm. And I'm like, okay, well, now he's played through interrupt number two. And you've locked out that pendulum zone. And I've locked out that other pendulum zone. Okay. And Martin just comes back. 
so he can tiger again, because this card is ridiculous, and even if I destroy it, its monster effect activates to still summon the monster anyway. Like, card is just wild. And then he plays the Foolish Burial in the bad zone. So he, he gave me a free, like, he's already played through Valor and Imperm and then gave me a free card. And then his Danger Snake hits itself. He also loses out on that draw. Yeah. So that's so, okay. four Lots things. Stuff goes wrong for the opponent. <laughs> and here comes interrupt number three. <laughs> he lost two cards and got interrupted three times, and he still got more cards than I do. So you're saying Luna Light is definitely a viable deck on a ladder? Yeah, Luna Light, especially with Ti like Tiger in general, is just the most obscene card. And then I don't even get my multi roll because he still got to White Rabbit me at the end of all of it. And there's an Appaloosa. Like if that was an access code talker, this game would be over. Uh, access code would only be 53. I'm on 8k. I would have been fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, you would have. You would have lied. See, access code talker only answers to uh, to us. Like the opponent, opponents can't win either. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't work so <laughs> I, I use the Flirtily to force one of those three negates that his Appaloosa has, and because of Shizuku, it's actually only two, which is nice oh, in its cool. way. That's a neat little interaction. I hadn't considered that. Actually, Shizuku denying uh, Appaloosa won the gate. Go for Hayate. And then Widow Anchor. And I'm just going to lower his guy to zero and take it. And now, the only thing I... Like, he's got no interactions. I should be fine. It's not enough for a kill. Because Ray can't summon to this zone. She can only summon to the extra monster zone. Terribly okay. unfortunate. But I get to dump Rose in case I want to use the graveyard effect. Leave him on 2k, so even if I had the summon, it wasn't game. But I get to go access code talker for 4, and I used to link 4 as one of the materials. So it's actually a 6300 access code talker, which is quite nice. Pop is tiger. Still gets a free body when I do that, but whatever. Pop is eagle as well. And, uh, and you leave your opponent with tanky so they can't possibly get an imper. Right, uh, play. and pop the Martin as well. Like, God, I hate Luna Lights so very much. He gets the trap card that doesn't do anything in his hand. Now, he's just got a tanky and a harmless trap card. I don't care about Serenade Dance when a monster is fusion summoned blank. Like, good for you. I should have this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 if I'm sat on your side of the table, I'm feeling pretty confident. And he top decks the... Oh, oh yeah, I also get my Widow Anchor back with multi-roll. Yeah, he top decks the worst possible thing I could ever see. The second tanky. <laughs> to get another tiger. Yeah! I, now, if it was just a tiger, I still would have been fine. It specifically had to be second tanky. For the extra 100 attack points. So, sure enough, Kalado Chick. Out comes Light Dragon at Ignister. Play through my one negate. Because, of course, otherwise the thing just pops. And I'll take his guy... Which means he no longer gets these back in his graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Like, this okay, again so should be everything, but he still you're gets. All of the cards. Like, he still just has Tiger. Oh, this is so dirty. Like, Tiger is such an obnoxious card, and he gets to go into Fire Fist Tiger King at 24 because of two tankies and negate my monster effect. <laughs> and put me on 23. 23. <laughs> I like you have got to be kidding me. Oh, you got to give back the uh, monsters. Well. Yeah. Oh my god, this is this is Yu-Gi-Oh at its finest. But I know this is tanky. I have perfect information, and perfect information is code for access code talker. Ooh, ooh, engage, engage. Access code talker. It's just yeah. Why? That Tricky card game, is just too good. Draw card. Hey, you guys. You guys uh, definitely need one. You need one in your collection. <laughs> Draw two. Field spell for a monster. I think it props to uh, Danson, your opponent. They, like, from a pretty desperate position, they made this work. Oh. Oh, they're still alive. That doesn't seem good. They're not alive. Ah. That's game. Oh. You can't come like, back from Union Carrier, Kaiser Coliseum. Nobody can play through this. Even if they kill the Union Carrier, the snow comes back and they're still locked. To one monster, right? Yeah. Ah, and then they gotta play through uh, Widow Anchor. Yeah. 
<laughs> but still, the rabbit would have shoved it. Hey, Alex J sixty four, welcome to the chat. Uh, just going through some replays. Hopefully, uh, you you know, learn something or you have some fun while we're doing this. And he can just see the writing on the wall. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he just scoops it up after I like pop his guy. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well played though. That Luna was, Light uh, is horrible. Like, oh my god, I hate that tiger so much. <laughs> that that match took like 45 minutes. It was terrible. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's just sort of showcasing. I didn't see that much Luna Light on the ladder. I feel like I should be seeing a lot more pace on that. I saw on that replay. Uh, Limor Talik. Tax? Take Tassus? Tacus? Sorry, I'm watching a small preview, so I can also uh, view the view the chat. Uh, what was this game? Ah, yeah, the opponent is playing Monarchs, and I think I'm playing Burn. It's actually a shame because uh, the replays that I decided to share for this, um, there wasn't so much of my plat climb. This is like my climb two plat. I do have like the best plat game that I played. But a lot of it comes down to doing the same combo just <coughs> over and over again. So it's not going to be like, I can talk about how I savagely outplayed. Oh, he hit the moment. Micheon. Yeah, so Micheon actually makes most matches trivial. If you resolve Micheon, it's very hard to lose with this burn deck. And he's got Demise for the Ray, uh, the, the Hayates as well. Er, Demise, Domain. He's got Domain, domain. to stop Hayates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he's got the and twin in the twister. end phase. Oh no, he used it on your turn. Okay. On his yeah, turn, rather. We're well, doing a lot of burn damage here. Yeah, you're on three cards to do 7,400. That's quite an uphill. Yeah, and our opponent is playing Monarch, so they, they are never going to run out of cards. They are always going to be doing stuff, and every time they resolve uh, Erebus, I'm going to be losing a card. And I can't do anything yet. Mich Michon is really, really good. Yeah, Sandion's the other one. The higher you climb, the better Sandion gets over Michion. He's the one that does 2k instead of half, but he's a 4k attacker, so like you can just summon him and beat up a Mechaba. Yeah, to be honest, um, you could you could just play the, the one that sweeps the spells and traps if you want to make the Eldritch Mecha even easier, but why would you want to get take away that card? Actually, no, that's a bad idea. Mm. Oh. oh, you've got the balance with Snow and Graveyard. This is just free. Yeah. So this, yeah, was, this... this is the big conflict Burn had in the TCG until yesterday, uh, where balance counts how many cards are in your hand. So if you were to activate this Threatening Roar, cool, you've got two cards to his four, balance would draw two. But if you Reckless Greed and draw two first to clear space, now you'll actually draw one with balance because you're a card shy. But Snow can banish all three cards off the field at chain link four, and then you'll draw for balance before you draw with Reckless and only control the one card. I can't remember if I do this right. No, I definitely don't do this. I make a mistake. I should do this, and then I would have been completely fine. However, I don't make the play that you just suggested. And... Oh. <laughs> oh, you, you, can't, you can't get back to Snow. He's got Vanity's Fiend. Ah, oh, yeah, that'll do it. So, yeah, that'll be why I didn't make the play. Let's say that. Not that I didn't see it. Probably <laughs> quite... And I think back, I was like, I don't think I saw that play anyway. But, yeah, I get my front and roll shot. Oh, shot dear. Away. Uh, we're, now, we're now on... Uh, Two cards to do 7,400. I would, yeah, I was about to say, as soon as he plays any card, I would chain balance. There's no reason not to go for these draws. Yeah, it's three cards. Yeah, and we still got the uh, Vanity Spin to worry about the. Yeah, you draw here. two. So the trick for Reckless, anyone who's picking We've this drawn. deck up, you play yeah. Reckless on your turn if you have one, you use it on their turn if you have two. You flip up them both and get the draw phase skip on four cards, or you draw three cards with it. You never go for five, and you never go for only two. Yeah. Uh, so we've actually drawn two of Jam Truth, which is awful in this situation. So we're pretty much hoping for the best here. But we do get our battlefield, uh, our battle phase skipper, so we buy ourselves some time. <laughs> Yeah, the worst thing you could possibly see in the deck is the second Odrama Trio. This is the best card in the deck. This one's the worst card in the deck. It's just, yeah. it is what it is. But you play two because of Trap Trick. Yeah, this is so difficult because you can't make Fiate either because of the main and also uh, Bandit. I've drawn like a lot of like really difficult cards. My opponent doesn't realize that they had me locked with the Vanity Sphinx. So they actually open a, open a window for me to actually get back into this game. 
And yeah, they're gonna go for a banishing their Oops. Perfect change. Uh, that does a thousand damage, doesn't it, right? Yeah, if it banishes a dark, I think. Uh yeah, yeah. So we're it's gonna put us low, but we're at twenty four fifty, so opponent's gonna have to put uh, a little bit of work. They're gonna have to resolve a battle phase to kill me. Uh, they go from, uh, I thought that was a lava out. golem for a second. <laughs> uh, I mean, that would have been different. Uh, gets a free spell. Yeah. So you just give him the... Yeah. And yeah, Camel so... Fright. That's an interesting tech. Okay. Well, threatening roar. Yeah, at this point we're going to say, yeah, you know what, I don't want to be punched in the face. And we're going to take Reckless because we've already used Reckless. Yeah. You know he has no extra deck, so the tokens are fine. And now he has a card in his extra deck, so now your Ray's fine. Very good point. Like, why? This is a really bad idea. Well, a opponent doesn't know we're playing Ray, right? Like, we've just been playing Burn cards. Why on earth would they expect me to be playing any kind of Sky Striker stuff? I don't think if you look at my graveyard... Uh, that we've revealed Sky Striker cards to them at all. True. So I don't think they're very safe here. Well, you've got Secret Blast set. Oh, actually, I missed it because uh, obviously we go for the Pot of Desires. Actually, well, I realized yeah. that um, I don't have a Battle Phase skip, so I kind of have to do something here. And we get our Ray snatched out of us, actually. Oh, dear. Well, there's your Battle Phase skip, but you take Carter uh, Demise. Well, I realize at this point, like, the game's getting out of control. If I don't win the game, uh, like, imminently, I'm just gonna, just gonna lose. Ah, so there's the Mishion. Mishion, after shuffling him back into the deck. Oh, it. Uh, and now we've got enough, because we've got two Secret Bowels and we've got Trap Trick. But we don't need the Trap Trick. I think because I've already done the math and realized that there's enough there. Yeah, this looks like enough. Game. Yeah. And we get for that one on the skin of our teeth. Wow. Yeah, uh, so we get, we, I got really lucky. You see, I say we because I got this weird thing where I separate my mind from body. Where I just go like, yeah, we, it's like two of us. Well, that's not true. It's just me. <laughs> I got really lucky in that game. That shouldn't have been uh, a win. But we, we take those, we squeak them out. Sometimes you get dealt into a really bad position and you can still snatch the game from the opponent. So always look for those windows where you can get cheeky lethal. Uh, this one's the optional one. Uh, Savage is... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that one right now either. Yeah, I I'm just going to go to the Sowed Rice Field match, this guy. <laughs> Sowed Rice Field? Yeah, that's just what he called that's his his name is Japanese for Sowed Rice Field, like S O W E D. Oh, okay. It could be a surname, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that hat is uh actually not as horrendous as I think. You've got a full combo there, even on the worst possible odds, right? Yep. But this is this is definitely a hand, for sure. So yeah, I max see him in his first draw phase. Yeah, absolutely. No uh, fear. No reason not to. Yeah. Pot of Prosperity for a scuffed, painful choice. And he takes the Droll and Lockbird, and I'm like, okay, that that's scary, because Droll and Lockbird absolutely bodies this deck. Foolish Burial Kit. Oh dear, it's Tri Brigade. It's tri -brigade. <laughs> like, not what oh, I wanted to see right now, to be honest. Not what I had a free maxi and no other interaction. Uh, Droll is the worst hand trap you could possibly encounter, and I draw Oof. a kaiju, not That's exactly insane, an though. extender. Now, still good though. Oh, okay, they pass. They pass pretty easily. Okay. So I get yeah. a Chi Chi, and he max sees me, and I'm like, okay, that's that's fine. I literally just did that to you. Like, that that's fine. I'm just gonna search. Now, if he Droll and Lockbirds me here. The game is over. Yeah, largely. Because, well, they don't uh, know that. Sam like... spammed, like, all caps. Uh, stop. Okay, I take the chat. Oh, yeah, he just said take the chat. Okay. So, he max sees me. 
I'm just gonna level with you. He failed the maxi challenge. I'm not gonna. Um, and there's no John Lockwood was he, not just slam and, bang. Yeah. So I'm gonna go into Dark Infant. He'll draw for maxi, and I'll search for Island. And what's about to happen is the greatest misplay in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. He draw and lock birds me. They've already maxied, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he just doesn't draw for Max C now. And every time I summon, the game's just gonna remind him up here in the top right corner. <laughs> like, oh, Max C. Oh wow. And then that's, oh wait, but draw. It's literally just gonna rub it in his face every time I play a card for the rest of the duel. And he's got DD Crow. That's another oh. interrupt. Like an actual fact, like had they used Droll just any step sooner, you wouldn't have had enough to combo off. I probably would have lost the duel on the spot, yes. But yeah. there's Maxi. But by the way, you drolled. <laughs> I mean, it's fine if they had the Maxi, right? Oh, you, this is a uh, Templar. You should generally go for it. Things have gone really wrong. Like I said, some, the, the difficulty, the skill ceiling in this deck is when you have to freestyle like this, but you still find it. Yeah, the access code. <laughs> just the lock bird showing up in the corner, like, over and over and over is just so funny ah, to me. So, it would look like you'd like to draw cards. It's like the paper clip from Microsoft Word. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a card. Would you like some help with that? Thank but, you for the follow, uh, Gamer Freak Vibes. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, oh. okay. Whack. Whack. Oh, Texas Smash. Get in, access code. Oof. Juicy. That was good. <laughs> like... Look how disappointed uh, Dark Magician is. Like, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. I mean, um, you, if you're going first, you kind of have to bail on the maxi challenge, right? Because like, you're never gonna. It's never worth giving your opponent the, their entire deck to do whatever they want. So, one of the biggest disadvantages of going first is the maxi. Uh, definitely, in this format. I don't recall writing this one down. I'm just gonna very quickly load this one just to see what it is, because I don't I don't actually remember what this one is. It's also not saved on uh, public, right? Yeah. Hey, Game Freak Vibes one five nine one to the chat. And Eldius, that's a bud of mine from California named Harold. I oh, cool. is this just another Cyber Dragon replay? I'm just gonna fast forward and see what happens. Duster into three. Oh, oh, I remember. This is the funny game. This is the one where my opponent just decided that he didn't want to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm not allowed to beat him, though. He's like, neither of us are here to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But you can win. It's fine. So this one is Duster into Solemn J for 4,000. <laughs> then Rhoda so that I can go Area <laughs> Zero, Ray into Punishment. Like, okay, man. Neither of us are here to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I get it. So that I can get ashed. Yep. Just, no one's allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh! today. That's fine. Windsor smash you. I gotta start shouting that. And, uh... Take your 1500, and then he decides he's gonna soul and strike that. Like, okay, you put yourself on a thousand. Why would you do that? You got a rate back for lethal, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. He just wasn't here to play Yu-Gi-Oh today. Like <laughs> somebody, somebody had a daily quest which was just activate counter traps. <laughs> That's the same kind of deck to do that. That's a problem with daily quests in these free-to-play card games. It's like, oh, we want you to play. Uh, That's why I didn't 20... have that one written down. It was so stupid. Play <laughs> twenty black and white cards in Magic, and you're like, oh, I don't have any black and white cards. So I'll just play the Star deck. Your deck's terrible, and it's just like, I'm literally just putting cards on the field so I can get my gold. Please, like, just kill me as fast as you want. It doesn't matter. I have two left, but we'll go visit your profile for your last one. Yeah, so this is the absolute best game I've played uh, in Platinum. Also, I'm just going to leave this ID up here for a sec. You guys be sure to follow Matt so you can check out his other replays when he makes them. Yeah, although if you don't want spoilers for our YouTube channel, maybe don't check all the public ones, or I can just save a few so we've got stuff to talk about. But yeah, if you guys want to just go ahead and check that. You might see me online, maybe we play uh, some games. You can, have, you can have some fun. You can watch me misplay in real time. Yeah, actually, just in the interest of saving time, I'm just going to type it into the chat. 426475. There. there you go. 
Yeah, cartoons. Uh, I really want to thank cartoons for this game. This game was uh, excellent. I really enjoyed this. Opponent is playing dinosaurs. So you can probably already oh dear. go for that. <laughs> yeah. VFD so, going uh, first or OTK going second? And he went first. Okay. Yeah, so... So he's not taking the pill. Fossil dig is an easy choice. Terraforming, so still... Oh, Raptor, though. And Rex, which you're never taking. Yep, Fossil Dig. Okay. So he didn't want Diagram as much as he wanted a baby, which means he already has Oviraptor. Yeah. Oh, also, or just back up. Okay, yeah. Is Miscellaneousaurus being legal is just disgusting. I just want to say that. Like, all dinosaurs are now mute everything. So this is a case of where I know my opponent can make... Uh, was it VF? Is it VFD or VFG? It's yeah. True King of All Calamities. The Japanese name for it is literally VFD. <laughs> yeah, True King of Calamities. Like, that's what the impermanence is going to be held back for. The weird thing is the English names for the other three were still Vanisher, Fathomer, and Disaster, which is what VFD stands for, but the VFD part didn't come over. Oh, okay. So, yeah, opponent's going to get free reign. I've got no interaction. They've got miscellaneous source, which makes their dinosaurs like, unaffected by everything, right? Shin Ryu O. Doesn't that mean like God King Dragon? <laughs> that is something for somebody far more fluent in Japanese to answer. <laughs> well, I was asking Earl, who's far more fluent in Japanese. Oh, yeah, I, I know I Shin to mean like God and O to mean King. Like that literally says like God Dragon King the Beast. <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah, so my opponent's going to go full scrap combo. I'm like, do I negate with impermanence? And generally, my line of play has been, if I don't understand what my opponent's combos are, I'm just going to see what their board is at the end of it, and then break it from there. Because the biggest risk you play with Slam and Dining Permanence is that they have enough extenders to just go ahead and uh, do their combo anyway. And if you don't understand where the breakpoints are in combos, it's really not worth throwing down um, key things like Impermanence that will let you play through uh, a negation. I mean, he's, yeah. like he's, he's like under that. Misk, so like Fibrax is the first viable place to use Imperm in the entire combo, and frankly, I'd rather hope he shotguns VFD in the draw phase and Imperm it. But he's got a Savage Dragon now, so it doesn't matter even if you do try to do that. Hooray! Yeah, so it's just a case of like, I don't know what my opponent's doing, oh, so God. I'm gonna, a Royal I'm gonna Rare Dolka. It gets worse. I mean, it gets worse. The Bisque Dweller. Well, that actually has an interaction in this. Oh, and then he's got the Book it gets of Man. Worse. It gets yeah. Worse. There's All there's right. no playing through pulls it. the UCT. Pulls, it. Pulls, pulls, pulls a replay? I wanted to yeah, let you draw so... a card first, sorry. <laughs> okay, go on, let me draw the card and then pull it. All right, so. <laughs> oh, no, six card back <laughs> have played Yu-Gi-Oh! and had this exact situation happen to me. Like, oh, Black, Black Glass Sab knows exactly. Like, this is yeah. just literally I saw the dots. Pockets, right? <laughs> Opponent's field is unstoppable frat boy party going on over there. They're all rocking out. And I am compl I'm completely stuck. Like, how many interactions is that? There's one, two, three, four, five, six when you can't add the... Uh, Dweller. Right, so They've got six interactions in my six cards, plus whatever's in their hand, right? So, the biggest threat to consider in play that stops me from winning the game is Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. My entire game hinges on my opponent playing their Conductor Tyranno at the wrong time. I'm all in, and I can't actually win with these cards. So I'm re relying on my opponent to activate the uh, Needle Fiber, so that Max C turns into one new card. But the game hinges on that ultimate conductor trano so if you want to play it from here yeah like if if by the end of this duel you don't want to build adagnister i don't know what to tell you <laughs> it's, it's, this deck has been great for me like it was so clean to climb with my win rate was extremely high yeah so first but, of all, we've got to turn off the savage dragon yeah That's the most like, important thing, just, the Omni negate. yeah just trade with the savage dragon get it out of the way and you pick the savage dragon and not the uct so that you don't telegraph that you're scared of the uct well, it's just like, if I target the UTC, you know, it with uh, Brock anyway, right? Right, so, but it, what I'm saying yeah. is, that, like, if you pick the UCT and force the negate of the Savage, you still tell him, like, I didn't want yeah. this UCT to happen. Yeah, so the game ends if they UTC here. 
Right. But we're going to find Connor Poe not doing that because they've got Dolka. So they go for Ash Blossom. So they actually had like seven forms of interaction. <laughs> right. So. Thankfully, okay. Ash is once per turn. So. We're yeah, no longer so afraid of his hand at all, especially since we have a terraforming. But you definitely link summon before you terraforming because you don't want him to know you already have the field spell. He could waste a Veiler here. Yeah. Well, or any of those other interactions. <laughs> We're looking at the burn Dolka uh, activations as well. Yes. And sure enough, there goes one of them. Yeah. Yeah, the Olimo Conductor Trano Arcade Jester is literally the most threatening thing because if they time it correctly, my turn will just abruptly end and my opponent just swings over. There goes the Dweller, so that's going to hurt the Doyon later on. Yeah. And once again, if he UCTs here, the game is over. <laughs> yeah, this is the actual last opportunity they get for a ultimate conductor trano. And he just me. dulkas it again. He feels confident. And then Dweller's going to negate everything else. So now you've... Yeah, he's got five racks. Okay. Yep. And then we got our maxi. Now, the only thing you haven't summoned yet is red. So if you search for red off I met you and then summon it from the field spell and he UCTs it, I think he's still yeah, okay, lose. Yeah, so I think that's the last opportunity he gets, actually, so... Yeah, we're gonna go... Yeah, he's shooting Rise of Dragon, which is largely irrelevant. It's probably he was just trying to get it to stop asking if he wanted to use Fibrax over and over, honestly. Absolutely. When we get that Reborn, which is gonna be super clutch. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna get to resolve this. Doesn't matter what we get, we've played for all of And he colors. doesn't UCTU. Yeah, this is literally where that... it feels like... In My Hero Academia, where you see all the different elements flying from point to point for all the different bearers of uh, one for all before. Yeah, that's, that's kind of it. what's happening now when we build up to chat. Yeah, the game should be over here. You had an extender to play through the UCT after that and still had a face up monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The UTC, there was about three chances too soon. But to, to your point's credit, they probably didn't realize I was going to be able to do all this. this and they destroyed trans? the Dolko. Yeah. says. So, the reason the UTC being used later is they destroyed Dolk after they used all the materials, but it's probably telegraphs that they don't have anything in their hand. So now we get to access Kid Talker, we can't go for the, uh, we do not have anywhere near enough resources to get for the, uh, what do you, the update, update jammer. jammer. Yeah. But we've got enough resources to sweep the board. And actually chunk our opponent out. Oh yeah, I didn't have enough Link Monsters to get there, so. Oppo my opponent, uh, at this point, I am banking on that they burn through every resource in their deck in order to stop me from being able to win. And they've got to beat a 5300 uh, access code talker, which I think they can't do. Uh, I think UTC is their only big monster. Yeah, yeah so opponent concedes. Because they can't beat 5300, they can't flip face down. And that was by far the hardest match I played on the entire Climbs Plat 1. So shout out to Cartoons if you ever get a chance to see this. Should have been playing Toons. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the Attic Mister deck is just so insane. I absolutely love the deck. I'm going to be playing it all the way up to next season. Uh, I don't see a reason to change at the moment. And it depends on what kind of releases that they put into the game, if there's a new theme or that. But Attic Mister, when you, can do, when you can play through that, like if I'm the opponent, you have to go through the replay and... I think if I can do everything I want to do uninterrupted and still lose, maybe I'm on the wrong deck this point. <laughs> but again, the game was over if they had just snapped the um, ultimate on my first normal summon. That was that was game. But it's a case of they just they probably weren't familiar with the matchup, so I'm not going to hold that against them. Yeah, I just left my ID on the screen there for a little while too. I also put it in chat. Uh, this is the second last one I have. This one was one I. Uh... I showed this to a friend of mine who's also on Ignister to ask him, like, do you see how to win this game? And he did not see it, so I figured this was a save, like a shareable replay, share-worthy replay. This okay. one's this one's a little trickier because this one isn't just like, oh, just do access code and kill them like every other game. I mean, it, it still is eventually, but uh, our opponent just kind of set one and passed. So okay. That's usually a really, that's a green light to just try not to kill him. Oh, you've not really, you've drawn really dicey, like Ash Blossom shots down your into... Yeah, I've drawn terribly. And he's got a Veiler. And that's I already have the field spell. Like, 
Yeah, that's pretty bad. So I'm just going to poke him for 8. I'm not going to waste an infant. I've already got the field spell. And I've set an imperm. And I take 2300 from I Met You because I played it. Yeah, and good thing they played Upstar, right? If you have Oh, they're playing <laughs> Sky Striker. Okay, you're fine. Because you know that your opponent can't make to you because they're playing Sky Striker. And they've made the wrong choice. They came to play you. <laughs> I, I had an Ash and an imperm. I did feel pretty comfortable. And like, yeah, yeah this will like... jump engage. And then you imperm the Kagari in main phase 2 to turn off the engage. Yeah, you've also got the Kaiju, which is going to turn off the Imperm's entire back row, right? Right. So, Imperm turns off that back row for now, but as soon as he ends his turn, it turns back on, but... Yeah, as soon as you Kaiju, the opponent's then um, stuck with a monster in their main monster zone, so all their Widow Anchor is there. Right. So, he's going to go for Shizuku, he's going to get the Search. Yeah, it can't be engaged, because they've already got one in the graveyard. So he goes for Widow Anchor, yeah. Which is still in his hand. Yeah, so, not deployed, so. so I know he's got a Widow Anchor in his hand, and I draw a name. I've got a body. Thank God, we've got a body. This is great. Give him the Kaiju so I don't get Widow Anchored. Summon Picari, and it was an Imperm. <laughs> How do you win the duel from here? Um, Let's see. You can go... Infant doesn't get you anything. It just gets you another fifth spell. You play all the same cards as me, right? Yep. So we have the exact same deck list, I believe. If you pass, you lose because they just do Sky Striker stuff, and then you're not going to play through that. Does it end this turn? No. Okay, so you have to get through next turn as well. Yes. Okay. But there is a line that you do this turn that ensures victory, more or less. They could. The only way they win is if they have Area Zero for the Kaiju. Right. So you're going to have to. You've already normal summoned, right? Yes. I'm actually struggling with this dual puzzle. Uh, can I see your extra deck? Uh, scroll down. So. Yeah, you've only got access to infant. How on earth do you do this? I can't, I can't actually see it in my head. So, this is one of those things where I said, like, once in a while you have to freestyle and do really weird things. And really weird things includes. that setting the field spell over the first one. Oh right yeah so that you have, your monster won't get destroyed by battle i have so three spells in grave <laughs> mind control <laughs> uh, okay yeah that's better that eagle boosters has been super super sweet i can't it, it's just been so good at just like forcing through access code to occur it on, guarantees on a like, body on the following turn yeah all right, and now you've got, unless they've got third interaction. Okay, yeah. You should be good to go from here. If you don't set the second island over the first one, you lose that duel. Yeah, because uh, your card gets destroyed by battle, right? Yeah. But you could have just played, uh, oh, of course, he had to draw in, like, engage or something in order to... Right, well, he had the Kaiju. Right. He couldn't have done basically anything. Except, like, yeah. Area Zero, the Kaiju off the board. Yeah, yeah. And it was by yeah. no stretch of the imagination a guaranteed victory for me. I was on 15. If he had Normal Summon Ray into Hayate, it was still game yeah. for him. But you have to play for the scenario where you can win. Yeah, 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 exactly. And update Jammer, update Jammer. Access Code Talker, All Might Smash. And, of course, the Royal one. <laughs> Just a start for extra star points. But yeah, your opponent can't respond to anything that Access Code Talker does. So you can actually like chain block it, which is really cool. Where you put like all of the optional effects underneath it, and then you've got the Access Code Talker on the top. Opponent can't respond to anything in your graveyard. And yeah, you just uh, resolve all of the uh, all of the stuff and then double swing for, for game. He attacks but... twice if you use Update Jammer as one of the link materials, yes. Yeah, Update Jammer is what makes Access Code Talker a, a real a real hero. Unfortunately, we okay. did find out that replays that happen in duel rooms can't be saved, so a couple ah, tournament okay. matches are gone. We had a really good replay where our opponent had two windows, and you outed it using a kaiju and imperm in a specific order, and another just fantastic replay with a really good read on Nibiru. Uh, our opponent was really smart. And unfortunately for him, we were smarter and saw the Nibiru, but I don't have those replays. The only one, other one I have left is like 
I, I call this replay how to chew five gum. <laughs> how it feels to chew five gum. I like uh I do like how if they, even if they need Beery right at the point where you're about to double tack them with access code talker for game, you just make a second access code talker and yes. for game. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what this deck does. Like it just goes, Oh, the Beery, cool. Make the second access code talker. The uh when you when you get Nibiru'd, like when you make the first access code talker, they have to Nibiru it or you just blow up their whole board. Or if you try to enter battle phase and they Nibiru it, they give you the token. And the extra deck plays a Link Spider that you turn the token into. And then you use the field spell to summon a body and the reborn spell to summon a body. And it lets you go into Transcode Talker and bring back the Update Jammer. And Update Jammer's not once per turn. So your 4300 access code summons a second 5300 access code instead that also attacks twice. And they can't neighbor you more than once per turn. And you punch them even harder in the face than the first time. <laughs> So, it's like it's just, it's like it's assault rage in Jesse <laughs> We like those. We like when our opponents tilt. I saved this duel specifically because like I wanted to be able to like look over it and just feel good. Every time I watch this game, it just fills me with happy. Uh, I switched your profile avatar for mine real quick because I'm the one playing here. But this is my That's deck so just doing everything it's supposed to do, like unencumbered by anything. It was like, oh, I just upstart goblin into engage. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, oh, all right, your deck, your deck is your deck is playing Sky Striker. It's just like I, I don't see this as a real viable contender this format. But obviously, when a game's going as well as this one clearly seems to be. All right, engage. Get Into the... engage. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's so disgusting. That is at somebody call the police. That is a violation right there. And then I drew oh into Magician God. Souls. <laughs> I think I'm going to go in the back seat. They're like, yeah, we got him. Absolute violation. Doesn't matter. I have called by the grave. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Just why not, why not? If you're gonna go, if you're gonna have Christmas once a year, why not now, right? Oh my god. <laughs> like, this duel is literally just, this is how it, this is that commercial, like, how it feels to chew five gum, the duel. You, you are literally the protagonist, and this person that you're playing against is, like, one of the side villains. Oof. I draw another card. <laughs> oh, impermanence, okay, okay. Yeah, and then we'll go ahead and casually set the engage. That's uh, another two cards. And a Widow Anchor. So you've got one, two, three bits of interaction. Shizuku searches for the Afterburners. Yeah, which is then gonna yeah I'm just plus away. six. Like, <laughs> Come at me, bro. And it's Virtual World. I've not struggled against this deck at all. I'm not really sure I now, understand what it's trying to do. I know how to play against Virtual World because I played Virtual World, the format that Master Duel takes place in, just the TCG equivalent of it. Hmm. Now, Sokaza, as soon as he summoned Gigi, all I had to do, all I had to do was activate Widow Anchor and take Gigi, and the duel was over. If he did not have Kowloon to get a trap in play, he could not summon any more cards, and the game would be over. And frankly, that felt too easy. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to let him play. And I just <laughs> left it alone. <laughs> I was you like, purposely decided to go, you know what? Uh, I, want, I want to see how you beat this. You actually decided to give him a chance. I decided right. to give him a chance and actually let him, like, play cards. I was like, I'm just, at this point, like, I, I already know everything his deck is capable of doing. I know what Shen Shen is. I know the VFD lines. I have three interrupts face down. I have in, uh, Widow Anchor. I have Imperm. I have Shark Cannon. I can't possibly lose this duel no matter what he plays. There is no scenario, there's no order of cards, there's no six card hand he could have had that possibly got him there. So I figured I would just let him have fun because I spent this duel having the most fun I think I've had in Yu-Gi-Oh ever. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool, Zulkin. And he has a Synchro, so I can't Imperm the Zulkin because it can't be targeted. And I was like, okay, cool, he gets a Crystal Wing. And I was like, at this point, it's time to start like actually interacting with him. And as soon as you flip up Anchor, you have to use Shark Cannon. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to make this board needlessly complicated for him. I'm just going to make him, like, super confused by everything that's going on. And just make this the most complicated game state you've ever seen. It literally looks like I'm drawing a country flag with the cards on the board. <laughs> like, it's all over the place. Like, right. he's got an M7. I've got the Imperm. Nothing matters. I've got, these four cards in my hand are more than enough to break through anything, so I don't care. Even if he goes for, like, Gaia Drake into Zeus, like, nothing matters. 
He's got the oh, monster reborn, geez. discard a card. Oh, I and got, it was Maxine. <laughs> Choice words to say about Zeus. And I sure enough, he it. does go into Gaia Drake. He makes Shen Shen. Good for him. Shen that... Shen's the macrocosmos, isn't it? Yeah, it's the one that when he declares this attack, he's going to get to put a card back in his graveyard. Like, it just doesn't matter. His own Crystal Wing's negated by the Widow Anchor, so it doesn't matter. But I wanted him to think I could use it the whole time. And then, yeah, he does this 300 to himself so that he can Zeus. He beats up my thing, whatever. Ray comes back. I should have just left Ray on the board and let him Zeus it, but I forgot that Ray was going to get banished by Shen Shen and just made a Shizuku that would get banished instead. But, so uh, you're, you're so busy chewing your gum, you just like almost misplay yeah. yourself. Yeah, and he just gets rid of everything. Like the board, oh, yeah. the gate is so pop. The game state was so complicated. He just clears out everything, and it's like, oh, cool, perfect information. He's going to end his when turn it, one material. When, He's got the opponent. Don't you just pass and then get back your crystal wing? Yeah. Okay. But now I ha I know he's got Nyan Nyan, and he's only got one material on Zeus, so I can do whatever I want. So I'll give you three guesses what's going to happen. Access Code Talker. <laughs> That's my first and only guess. Is it Access Code Talker? <laughs> All right. Spoilers, no spoilers. I want to find out. Earl, have a great time at work, mate. Catch you next time. Oh, oh. Hey, look, he's got a light monster in his graveyard. Oh, yeah, Zeus. Ha! Huh. I hate that card. <laughs> Access so code's much. only 53. Oh, yeah, so wait. How do you. Oh. Okay. 15, 15 counters. <laughs> oh, you get the hit with his own Zeus as well. That's extra, extra interest. There you go. And that's number Wang. That's clearly the opponent out. That was, uh... Well, sometimes just everything goes your way, and uh, you just have to enjoy those moments when you have them. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Yeah, you can actually check the profiles, right, of the people you played against? Like, yeah. To see see if any of them actually uh, had, a had they progressed. <coughs> the Ignister list. Yeah, like, honestly, I'm really happy with this. The only change that I made from my deck is I took out one desires for Harpy's Pepper Duster to try and make the uh, Eldritch matchup slightly more bearable. The problem is, is you just lose to Solemn Imperial Order or Solemn Goza match. Mm. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, if, if, if they've got Imperial Order, it doesn't even matter if you have Cosmic Cyclone because they just block chain block you <laughs> with the counter trap. Uh, you know, essentially, your only way of beating Eldritch is if they open uh, Solemn and one card that stops you from playing, is you have to open Lightning Vortex and Harpy's Feather Duster. This way expensive trash fire was the deck that I was just playing in that last replay. <laughs> yeah, and that uh, wasn't the deck that you hit Plat 1 with, right? So you put all of those gems into a deck that didn't go to Plat 1. This deck absolutely could have made it, it's just that the games took too long. At Ignister, it's just speedrun. This deck is better. This is the best deck I have, but it takes too long to play the games. Yeah, I guess it's, that's the kind of one deck you take to a tournament, right? But I don't understand... Well, I've seen you do a lot of cool stuff with that, but I just... Isn't your Eldritch match up so horrible? No. No matchup is horrible. You have way too many cards that are just way too obnoxiously good. This turns off Imperial Order, for example. Like, that's really it easy to do. Like, as soon as you play against... Um... An only player knows what they're doing, right? They, if you set a card, they'll never put their Imperial Order in front of that card because it could be impermanence. Right, but you put the Impermanence in front of the Imperial Order yourself. Yeah, and then they use the Eldritch to kill it on their turn, and then you can't do anything with the spell cards in your turn. Right, but your Widow Anchors and stuff activate on their turn. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, you want to interact with them on their turn, but then what do you do when it comes back to you? How do you... Some combination of Orochi, Snow, Souls, your extra deck... Because they're gonna, they're gonna, if they've got Goza match up, like, you can't play any of your extra decks, can you? Because uh, Ray uh, It is, depends uh, on like which ones you draw. You still have access to, like uh, in the case of like Goza match, Rose and Snow and Union Carrier are all light monsters, and then you still just Kaiser pin them. Yeah, but then don't they just beat up the uh, train with um, the Eldlick? Yeah, at which point Snow comes back, and they're still Kaiser pinned. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, Kaiser Coliseum is at three. That is very, very nasty, as you put it. Yes. 
Yeah, no, again, like I said, this is like traditional format without good cards. That's what uh, Master Duel is. But <laughs> it's... I still think that Elden match is really horrible. Like, it's kind of like, for me, almost an auto-loss playing the uh, Agnistos. But Sky Striker is basically a buy every time I've played against it. <laughs> uh, the Dry Shrin matchup is 50-50. I kind of have to have a Kaiju. I feel like it's very hard because you can do some cool stuff where you time infinite permanence on their XE monster when they're trying to ritual summon. Uh, but it's, again, it's always really hard to know where to ash them because they've got so many extenders. Are you building an Evil Eye deck? I built an Evil Eye deck. I was just checking if that was a free pack and it's not. Yeah. Uh, I don't have all the cards for it yet, but this is this is just the same idea. Um, you like using Union Carrier to equip this extra deck locking thing to Serzial with the equip on him so that they can't use their extra deck or play cards. Ah, uh, I see, I see. And to do that combo, you have to open Serzial. That's that's it. That's the combo, and you get seven copies of him between the terraformings and the field spells and stuff. Like, oh, okay, that could be an interesting one. I mean, Magician I Souls is just Pot of Greed in this deck. Uh, the field spell doesn't do anything like after it's already active. So like Souls uh, can just send like all your free cards. Obviously, you have Chicken Games and Upstarts to like dig. So even though it says it's fifty-five, it's really a forty-nine card deck. And then I have three. Uh, cross it designator and two call by the grave and then three drag down into the grave like i am not getting ash blossom to stop it <laughs> and here's, like, a, here's a question for chat actually if can you do you get the plat one badge at the end of season if you get there and you get demoted out of plat one or do you have to hold it until the season closes in order to get that badge so from my understanding it shows you over here uh past six ranks, and you can see the one. Ah, so even if you get demoted out of plat one, uh, does that change down to plat two if you lose, is what I'm saying? Because, like... I believe it okay. would, yeah. Okay, so then, this is a design mistake. Like, it should... Your rank should be whatever your highest was, because now we're, we're encouraged to not play until the season resets. Yeah, when you get King of Games, you can't lose it anymore once you have it. It's just this Until first lose, month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you drop off from Plat 1, the medal you have changes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're kind of in a position where I'm encouraged to not play Yu-Gi-Oh! until the season ends. This deck's almost built. Droplets are expensive. Uh, yeah, this is uh, similar to the deck that Odan was playing at the World Championships in 2018. Uh, Tokyo. <laughs> uh, this actually, is legal. I at, when I was at Worlds that year... Uh, Bodan was by far head and shoulders the best player in the entire room, and he lost on the final stage. Uh, he got caught out in uh, end of match procedure time, but I watched him play through, and he played people like Gali and stuff like that, all excellent players, and just Bodan's game was just on point every single game. And it was just like, he, he absolutely deserved I don't want to take anything away from his opponent who actually won Worlds that year, but it was just insanely to watch him. This uh, is yeah. I'll, I'll, This is just allowed... And shouldn't be. The first thing Master Duel should ban is this card. Oh, wrong on Miniad. Uh, yeah, you, you can't even Kaiju it, can you? No, you can't do anything. Yeah, that card needs to just... And then lost. this, which is the most expensive deck I've built. or I, I've built the list, not I don't have the cards. <laughs> this deck would cost like it's, $600. It's called Mistake. Is that, is that an indicator of... It's an indicator that it's a mistake, it's legal, and it's a mistake for me to build it. It kind of all follows the same theme, though, right? Access code door for game. Uh, this one, act, you could like th this one's actually a go first, make a crazy board deck of like five to six negates, in a thirty-three ah, card deck. Oh, because you're playing um, three draw one cards. Seven draw one cards, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, seven draw one cards. That seems pretty good. And then this thing here, which cares about how many spells you played per turn. Like, if you play three spells, this card summons itself and Jackal King from the deck, and then puts a counter on each, and then Jackal King can take the counters off of them to negate a monster effect, so you can't get hand trapped anymore. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Like, the format is, like, there's so many absurd turn one combos that you can do in this format. It's going to be interesting to see when they start introducing extra formats, if they allow uh, TCG uh, FNL lists as well. I do like uh, Distrudo. Because there's, there's a lot of boards where, um, like, to get back to, like, your Gozen 
and rivalry issues and stuff. If you get rivalried, then Justrudo and like Dark Worm, for example, can go into Black Rose Dragon and nuke the board. And if you get Gozend, you can go into Yazi instead. They're all darks and just pop the Gozen with Yazi. Yeah, that's having Axe to Gozen matches seems super important. In fact, Gozen matches needs to go, and Imperial Order really needs to go as well. Kaiser but... Coliseum really needs to go. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cards like that. It's, um... I wonder how the game's going to change if they introduce a diamond and uh, plus tiers like they have on Duel Links. Yeah, I suspect I... that the uh, after Plat 1 will be Legend and then King of Games, and you won't be able to fall out of King of Games to address the we can't play anymore issue. Yeah, I still feel confident I would get there on Agnisters with that deck. When yeah. you can play through the dinos, when you can play through a dino player like that, like I feel like it's got room to get there. It's just my concern is if Eldlick becomes the main deck, I kind of just want to play Burn because Burn just doesn't really <laughs> care what Eldlick's doing, and they just solemn judgment. Like, well, all right, just the thing is that unlike a tournament, you're allowed to switch. So if that day you see like three Eldlick decks, nothing stops you. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's why I put the uh, Harpy's Feather Duster in. Uh, when I had one Nibiru in my deck originally. And I took the beer out, and of course that'd be the one game that I, the very first game is when I then play against uh, Troy Brigade, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, this guy being I an ultra it. sucks, because he's the, this one's really good. Oh, that just burns him for 2k. Yeah, and he's got 4,000 yeah. attack points. Eldlick is a bit of a, a bit of a walkover if you're playing burn. You can also Sky Striker as well when you would damage three of them. It kind of blocks them out of playing any of their spells. Mm. And then you just can burn them because they pull their cards face down on the field. So, those matchups are kind of easy. It's just the Drytron matchup. You just 100% lose. Like, you could change the deck, the burn deck, I guess, to play Kaijus, but even then, like, the matchup is just too hard. And then there's other stuff where you struggle, like Salaman Greats, when they're playing, like, they get the counter traps and they keep nuking your cards and stuff. It just gets. It. You lose to the random stuff, right? Yeah. When you build for meta, it makes it harder to lose, or harder to beat non meta. Although, with Gazelle being at one, I don't super care about Salamangrate. Like, I don't think I'm going to see it terribly often. No, I, I saw it in gold. And it was cool. It was, it, I lost it to it when I was playing Burn. I thought it would be easier because they put so many cards on the field, but then I realized like how much interaction they've got. Through. Your back row actually makes a matchup challenging. That card is so necessary. Like, <laughs> uh, right. I actually used that to... when they my One of my opponents was playing uh, Dark Lords, and they play the Dark Lord that gives you a monster. I was saying turns off my field spell. Obviously, I didn't know that, so I had to make Security Dragon so I could turn my field spell on. Yeah, well, it's the same with the Nibiru thing. When you turn the token into Link Spider and then you summon something with the field spell, you have to still have a Link 2 you can make to, like, yeah. like you Monster Reborn something and then make Security Dragon and then the field spell summons a body and that's how you get to, like, Transcode Talker. The only thing you can't do is Kaiju them and play through Nibiru. Oh. Because if you yeah. kaiju them, you can't use Transcode Talker. You ha you can't yeah. summon... Guess how many times I did that without realizing that you couldn't do that. <laughs> like, I, I had lots of games where I'm like, yeah, now I make Transcode, now I get access to it, I win. It's like, access code, can activate it. I'm like, why not? Why is the game broken? What's going on? Because I kaiju them. Yeah, you can, you can use Splash Mage and stuff, because they all say for the rest of the turn, but Transcode specifically, if you kaiju, Transcode's turned off for the turn. If you yeah. want to beat Nibiru... On, and in a game that you have to kaiju them, the ways to do it are A, just have Eagle Booster. Because you totally can just Eagle Booster your access code and then that's it. That match is just one. If you or if you your Eagle Booster makes it to access code talker, the game is over. Uh, you can do it with the shield as well, right? Yeah. The other play is the using your Baruru dump on the balloon, Hiari, and then bringing back Hiari and using Hiari to tribute the other monster. And that increases its level, so now it can be... Like, it can't make Update Jammer because it's level 1. Update Jammer says level 2 or higher, guys. But if this uses its effect to tribute a Cybers monster, its level becomes 4 until the end of the turn. And the one that you add is the shield, who then special summons himself by negating, like, your Splash Mage that already used its effect. And then this guy also protects your Access Code Talker from things like Imperm, Nibiru, and so on and so forth. So there are, like... If you're feeling, like, a little at risk, there are lines you can do. Uh, that gets back to that one duel we had against unnamed opponent, uh, where he went first and he set three and summoned Ecclesia and then turned it into Artemis and passed turn. And it was, uh, 
I was actually helping someone with that duel. Like, they were screen sharing with me, and I was, like, walking them through how to play it. And he was like, oh, he must have Fleur de Lis. That's why he made, like, the Link monster. And I was like, or one of his sets is Schism, and another is Droplet, and he's waiting to, like, Droplet discard the doll in his hand and then Schism you. And he's like, no, 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 it has got to be Fleur de Lis. There's no reason to take an Ecclesia off the board. It's guaranteed Fleur de Lis. So we play through the turn, and one of the sets is in Perm, and another set's in Perm, and there's still one set left. I'm like, okay... That had to have been, like, the droplet, the schism, God knows what it was. But sure enough, they draw for turn, they play one card, they pass their turn. And uh, I'm telling him, like, it's still not Fleur de Lis. And it turns out that that last set is Ice Dragon's Prison. And he goes, it's guaranteed it's Fleur de Lis. And I'm like, no, it's Nibiru. And he's like, there's no way it's Nibiru. It's Fleur de Lis. And I'm like, no, he wants you to think it's Fleur de Lis so you don't play around Nibiru. And he tells me, there's no way my opponent is that good at the game. There's no, no way that this is Nibiru. You start assuming that your opponents aren't as good at the game as you. That's when your ego gets in the And I tell him the line, go through shield, play around Nibiru, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as he goes into battle phase, down comes the rock. Now, he still went on to win that game anyway, because we still had... Uh, recovery play and our opponent was top decking and his top deck was max C that he had to just set and then we just reborn the wing pe wind pegasus and killed him anyway yeah. but like yeah like you can like y your opponents are not bad unless they play poorly like unless you see your opponent do something like use droll and lockbird after they max C you you should assume that their back row is the worst possible thing it could be for you. <laughs> like, that, that back row, that's always imperm. That's always just solemn assuming, judgment. Just start assuming that every opponent you play is Joshua Smith, because you have no idea. And then you're going to think, until they do something that shows me otherwise, this is Joshua Smith, and, like, this is a top-level player. They're not going to intentionally play badly. That's kind of probably the best thing that you can do uh, to get your win percentage up and start treating your opponents with just the respect that uh, you got to give them until they show you otherwise that they've misplayed yeah, the other one that we unfortunately didn't have saved was an opponent that ended on winda and a back row that we oh, knew yeah, the shadow, with yeah, the shadow, shadow schism way. and we had uh the kaiju, kaiju and the imperm and it was like we can kaiju this winda but if we wait for them to flip up shadow schism and get a second window we might not be able to imperm it anymore so we want to imperm this first window and the opponent changed Schism to the Imperm and summoned the second window immediately. So Imperm got to turn off one and we got to Kaiju the other and go on to Axis Code kill them. Glorious duel. Oh yeah, the opponent didn't like that. Probably a lot of salt involved. Uh, rightfully so, when you make two windows and still get blown out. Because like the Lightning Storm, well in that case, case Lightning Storm would have been a great draw anyway because you just go straight after the Schism. And then you force them to make the uh, second window, and then you just commit both cards, no problem. Yeah, that, that was another duel from um, that other person I was talking about. His opponent set one and normal summoned Barrier Satchel, the Stormwinds pass, and his sixth card was Lightning Storm. And he goes, oh, I Lightning Storm for monsters, right? And I was like, no, you Lightning Storm for back row, because you can just beat up this Barrier Satchel. He also had an Imperm in his hand. So you just Lightning Storm the back row, which was an Imperm, Imperm the Barrier Statue, and just full combo oh. over him. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it seems pretty legit. You just uh, think more than one step ahead will win you a lot of games. <laughs> do you want to do you want to just expect a random game and we can cast one of those, or what would you like to do at this point? Because we've kind of gone through all of our replays for this time, and we'll build, we'll collect some more replays over next season. We'll try and yeah, the season out. ends in like twenty three hours. So uh, honestly, the stream's at the three hour mark. If you want yeah, to just cool. end it. We can call it here, and we'll, we can get this up on YouTube, so you guys can check out our, our content, uh, see what our replays were. Hopefully this has been interesting for you guys. If it's something you want to see more of, please make sure you follow uh, the channel and subscribe where you can. And we'll, we'll keep at it, we'll collect some more replays, and we'll sit down and have another chat through, go through updates to the format, and... Yeah, although I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm definitely going to be playing Access Code Talker in whatever deck that I'm playing in the next season. <laughs> Unless they be... make a new ban list. <laughs> Unless... Unless uh, Eldritch becomes the only deck of the format, I am going to be playing Agmister. And if, if they reset me back down to bronze, like at the end of the season, I've got to climb again, I'll just probably play Galaxy until gold, and then I'll switch <laughs> to burn, and then I'll go to Agmister when I want to take it seriously. My suspicion like, is oh. that they're going to set us to gold one, and that it's going to last until the current dual pass ends, 
and then Sorry. that's when we're going to get a new forbidden list and a new dual pass and that that dual pass will cost money that time for dual pass premium yeah which is fine i'll, I'll buy them they're good value but uh yeah, I, I think that the format is going to get more and more Drytron heavy as it goes on, because there are three Ben 10s, Mu Beta Fafnir is in the card pool, uh, Eva's still legal, Union Carrier's still spell. legal, like, there, there is no deck more powerful right now, like, at full power than Drytron is, and Drytron doesn't lose to, like, any hand trap and can play through so many of them when played properly. Yeah, the biggest... Eva is the biggest uh, culprit there, right? If they if Eva gets axed, I feel like that deck becomes a lot. Easier. It's you just need a it's still Ben Ten. Ben Ten is so ridiculous. And like it was the best deck in the TCG when Dragon Link was even legal, and that was before they had Diviner. They had three Ben Ten and no Diviner, and that's never been true before. And in Master Duel, it is. Yeah, well, it'd be interesting to see because like the for me, I generally find whenever I can resolve the Kaiju. I'm in a very strong spot to win if I can, but I do need to get through the two um, Herald of the Orange Lights. Mm. But other than that, it's like the matchup isn't anywhere near as hard for Eldlick. Eldlick is just ugh, solemn judgment. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to need some more back row hate if that gets more and more popular. I mean, yeah, if it becomes bigger, I could definitely come in with the Twin Twisters and just accept games. I lose games where I'm opponent and some draw. No, I'm actually even wondering whether or not Cyanet Mining makes sense. A lot of people are playing Ash, but it's just so much consistency uh, for, for that deck. The thing with Cyanet Mining is that it has to discard a monster. Uh, okay, in which case, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Oh, wait, you can actually see exactly your, your data. Yeah, the, this, this used to be the funniest thing for me to scroll through ever, because it was like, games won, 35. In a row. Yeah, it was like, games won, 35, monster summoned, zero, because I was playing Burn. Oh, okay, wait, how many how many wins do you have total? What is your win percentage? I honestly have no um, idea. Scroll, scroll through, they'll tell you how many you've won, it'll tell you how many you've lost. 67 of 94. So, like, I lost, like, 30 games. Okay, wow, so you're looking at a 60... What is that as a win percentage, right? Uh, 67 out of 94. That's 71.2%. Uh, 71.2%. Give me just a second, I'll just boot mine up. Um, where did you access that data? Uh, it's just like when you click your profile at the top left and then click on data. Profile data? Okay, give me a second. I'll tell you what my... It's going to be lower than yours. So what was your 71? 71.2. And it included an awful lot of ticking around in gold. <laughs> uh, gold is like where the casual good players are. Like players that know what they're doing and they're just playing fun decks. The there was also a, a a learning curve on the client. Like I was playing, that's how I know that Ray couldn't use herself in the battle phase when it was set to auto because I lost a duel to it that I shouldn't have lost. But now you know better. Yes. All right, just give me a second. I just got to boot uh, boot this up. So seventy one to to plat one. I also missed a login day. If that's annoying. Yeah, I was away this weekend, so I missed the day, but it's fine. I'm not I'm not gonna change the deck, like and because there's no rotation in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. They're gonna like I feel like Agnister is nowhere near a big enough part of the format. Like in the TCG, is it even a deck or is it just <laughs> kind of like Number of quest it's... duels. I have nineteen lost losses in quest duels. All nineteen of them are the, the demise, one. demise one. The level three <laughs> demise duel. I lost to that nineteen times before I finally got it. Uh, I, I actually probably have a lot more losses because I was just conceding where I looked at the hand and went, ah, not good enough. I just conceded so I can just play again. Alright, data, let's see. Uh... Oh, I've opened 463 packs, so that's interesting. Alright, number of. So it's number of duels versus number of stand. Uh, yeah, how many duel wins right? do you have? Right, I have 127 duels. Oh, 127 had... duels, okay. And 85 of them were wins. So what's my win percentage? 85 out of 127, 66.9. 66.9. Okay, less than yours. So try aim for a better win percentage. I, want, I hope. I hope I can see that per season. Like I hope they said it so I can just change my, sort my data, uh, change my data so I can be like, oh, how did I do this season? Aim for a better than 66 percent. But guys, that's <laughs> achievable. That's just winning more than half your games. Number of synchro summons 12. All 12 of those are Wind Pegasus Adagnister. When I was going from plat 2 to plat, like plat 3 to plat 1, and I just played the deck like 12 times just to speed I, run it. I just battle damage inflicted on opponent. 14, 5, and 8. <laughs> ah, yes. That would be the, uh, 
Galaxy deck. Yeah. Highest all attack right. point, that would be that access code that was made with an Appaloosa. <laughs> Alright, we can, we can all sit there and, and measure our our sticks with uh, with our stats, but I think we should probably wrap the stream up here, and we'll collect some more replays. Guys, thank you for your time. Hope you've had fun with this. Oh, sign up mining. is send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Yeah, that makes it a lot better. It's just a case of... It's very strong. I don't have to think about it. It doesn't make my Eldritch matchup any better. It doesn't do anything for my Drytron matchup, but it does make some of those janky hands a lot better where you open like two purple. So wait, yeah, you didn't ask my question. Was Agnes just like a TCG top level deck or? Uh, I played it. I believed that it was, but um, the friends of mine, it. the friends of mine that I convinced to also play the deck were too preoccupied with like, well, if I go first, I want to make a rival. I don't want to play it as a go second OTK. So like they weren't playing things like Eagle Booster and I couldn't so convince wait, a, them to do it. This is a meme deck. We literally just made plat one on a meme deck. Like it, it still did, like it got some tops, I don't think it won any major event, but uh, it, it's basically just like better Salamangri. It's just like cyber spam. But I couldn't convince any of my friends to like try Eagle Booster except for one. And wouldn't you know it, he did top a YCS with the deck, but he did say in his profile that like he only ever used Eagle Booster when he cited it in going second. And I'm like, the deck is a go second OTK deck. Like this is how you're supposed to play it. So yeah, yeah. If you copy this deck for your own thing, just try and OTK people. If they max see you. Just take the challenge every time. Like. No mercy, no, strike first, strike fast, no mercy. Cobra Kai, <laughs> the deck. Uh, guys, that's going to that's gonna wrap it up for us, but we'll catch you again. Uh, probably in about two weeks, maybe we can collect some more replays, uh, and then we can have a bit more of a discussion, see how we're doing on our next climb. Yeah. And, yeah, we'll catch us up on YouTube and stuff, so you guys can then uh, catch any of this content if you've missed it. So I'll let, I'll let you do the closing since it's your show, but thanks for having me on. Not a problem. Thanks for being on. Yeah, uh, I hope to try and do more of these streams, probably even maybe another one this weekend, because the format actually ends... Oh, thank you for the follow. That was you. <laughs> uh, that was me, yeah. The, the format actually ends, like, tomorrow afternoon, so there's there's going to actually be, like, an entire week with, like, a new meta and new people trying, and God knows what else they change. Probably very little, but I suspect that that's when they will add King of Games, for example. And therefore, we'll hopefully have, like, some more replays to show. And I do plan on, like, I, I did keep some of them public. Um, if you wanted to, like, go over some of the ones we saw today. And any new ones I add that aren't, like, the stupid one where the guy just, like, Solemn judgmented it and Solemn striked himself to death for no reason. Uh, I, I do keep those ones public. So you guys are welcome to get a sneak peek. But the in-depth, like, why what happened happened will obviously wait for the stream. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by, all 21 of you who are still here. Three hours is a very long time to listen to Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, but... We were actually playing games, we are just talking about our replays, all right? Yeah. So it wasn't like you were seeing our, our full slide, but we kind of like the, the format of being able to sort of explain our faults after the fact, and then interact with the, with the guys when yeah. we need to. One more time, here's Matt's ID for following, 702-426-475. Yeah. As soon as I can get a Galaxy Eyes, like, monster art, it's going on there, or access code. One of these two. Yeah, you got Demon, I see. Uh, if you need Unfathomable, the burn deck almost guarantees that you get it. You get that for winning a game without normal summoning. <laughs> you, you get a Demon off of uh, playing Galaxy, because you just, on your first attacking turn, have to do more than 8,000 damage. Um, so you just make the uh, Galaxy Prime and attack for 10k. Yeah, I, I got Demon game. using Ignister. It's the same thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, you can do it with Agonister as well. So yeah, see, yeah. Do, and see. here's my ID one last time. 528-180-828. Yeah, I've, I've got mine set to casual. I probably should get rid of that. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of... <laughs> I guess it's considered casual that I'm going to keep playing it. But yeah, that's going to be the deck, and I'm pretty confident I'll climb, uh, climb up again. All right. Well, uh, I hope to have you on the stream again. And, yeah, of course. Uh, it was nice meeting those of you who are first-time chatters. You guys are fantastic, and we'll see you next stream. Take care, guys.